Welcome to Norman and the Gaylord family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium for college football. Today, Fox Sports Net brings you the Fresno State Bulldogs of the WAC to take on the nation's number one ranked team, the Oklahoma Sooners. Hi everyone, Bill Land, Dean Blevins with you. Glad to have you aboard Oklahoma and Fresno State here today. And the big buzz here around Norman is, will this Sooner team be up for a Fresno State team that has been labeled as a giant killer? I don't know, Dean, after Oklahoma's huge road win at Alabama, could they be uh, caught from behind here, so to speak, by Fresno? Well, Bill, first of all, I think Fresno's really good. You know, their non-conference schedule speaks for itself, home or on the road. I, I think Oklahoma is susceptible. Yeah, they're a four-touchdown favorite. They have better players. They should win. By how much, I don't know. Uh, but I know it's impossible to keep your uh, focus and your intensity up for many games during the season. And back-to-back -back in this situation, I doubt they will. Well, it's certainly been an impressive start for the number one ranked Sooners, and maybe the biggest highlight has been the play of quarterback Jason White and the fact that he is healthy through those first two. Well, I, you know, he's the heart and soul of this ball club, and you kind of want a guy like him as your heart and soul because he's just a, a guy taking snaps who's really a lineman, has the team's respect, has the two bad knees, but knows how to play within himself, and Chuck Long calling the plays that really, Bill, keeps him out of positions as much as you can to keep from hurting yourself. You can't always do that, but for the most part, they protect him. Most folks on the national scene, when picking Oklahoma number one, they said because of their defense, and I would have to say that it's been as billed, very good. Well, very good. Uh, you know, are they the best? USC's pretty good. There are a couple of others out there. But Oklahoma's just outstanding. They've done it with speed, and they do it with experience. Number 10, Lance Mitchell there. And, and they don't have a weakness. You know, you see Teddy Lehman and what he can do on the corner. You have a bunch of uh, secondary guys who will be playing in the NFL. And, of course, up front you have hosses that not only do you have two down linemen, but they can be rotated with two others and stay fresh. And that's really been a help for the Sooners. And when you start talking about their defense, it's almost like we'll pick a star because they all are yeah. stars and award winners. We're going to start with a guy who might be the best, particularly now that he is healthy, Tommy Harris. I think he is the best, and I think he's one of the best defensive players in the country. Tommy Harris is a young defensive lineman who will probably come out this year as a junior. He did not redshirt. Last year he was hurt. This year he's healthy, and he is a dominant, dominant player. And Teddy Lehman is as well. And if there's any player that really personifies Bob Stoops, it's him because he's a, a no-nonsense type guy. He's got speed. He's tough. He keeps his mouth shut. He's everything that Bob Stoops is and wants his players to be. Wow. What a challenge for Fresno State. Coming in off a big win over Oregon State last week in Fresno, they've been beat up a little bit, particularly yeah. their starting quarterback who was out for this one. Jeff Grady, though, gave a gutty performance in the win over the Beavers. He'll have to come up with great play today for them to get the upset. Well, Paul Penninger was their guy, and I think they would have liked their chances a lot better had he been here. He's not. Jeff Grady's the man. Ironically, coincidentally, he has a brother who played him this week as a scout team quarterback at Oklahoma in uh, Tommy Grady. But this guy has the potential, Bill, and their coaches think that he can lead this club to an upset win. I think the key thing for him is to not turn the ball over today against the Sooners. Oklahoma fans, it'll be a sellout again. They come here anticipating the trick play. That's certainly been a part of Bob Stoops' arsenal. Well, with more on that, the third man on our crew, here's Curtis Fitzpatrick. That's right, Bill. If you were having a conversation about Oklahoma football this week, you probably couldn't have gone a day or uh, maybe five minutes without talking about that trick play against Alabama last week. What an unbelievable play it was. A lot of moxie involved, but it's not the first time we've seen that from Bob Stoops and company here in Norman. 1999, Bob Stoops' first year, Oklahoma and Texas. Patrick Fletcher, backup quarterback to Tim Duncan, the kicker for the touchdown. 2001. Oklahoma, Kansas State here in Norman. Fourth string quarterback Hunter Wall passes over to a wide receiver Antoine Savage back to Hunter Wall and he goes in for the touchdown. And then we skip ahead last year in Columbia, Missouri, Oklahoma and Missouri. Safety Matt McCoy to fourth string tight end Chris Chester. Game was tied at that point. Sooners went on to win it. And then last week, Oklahoma, Alabama from their own 31 yard line, the fake punt, Blake Ferguson to Michael Thompson and guys the thing that all these plays have in common is that they all worked the one exception was the Independence Bowl a couple years ago Bob Stoops first year but Pat Hill the Fresno State head coach said earlier this week you look really smart when they work you don't look so smart when they don't work Bob Stoops is looking pretty smart these days guys 
Yeah, he certainly is genius level, I guess <laughs> uh, you might throw that tag. Hey, stay with us. It's going to be fun here today as Fresno State goes for the upset against the nation's number one ranked team, the Oklahoma Sooners. It is another sellout here in Norman. They're done with the grilling. They'll be coming in the stadium in just a moment. Welcome back to the University of Oklahoma. Last time we were here for the home opener, it was Retro Day. Well, that car should have fit for that one. What tradition here at the University of Oklahoma as the Sooners come aboard? Another sellout crowd in this expanded stadium as Oklahoma faces Fresno State. Bill Land, Dean Blevins, Curtis Fitzpatrick with you, and glad to have you with, you, with us today here in Norman as the Sooners, number one in the country, 2-0, after victories over North Texas and then on the road at Alabama last week, take on Western Athletic Conference Fresno State Bulldogs, who lost on the road to Tennessee in Fresno State's season opener. That was 24 to 6. And then last weekend on a Friday night, they beat Oregon State 16 to 14 in a come from behind performance that has given them inspiration to pull off a major upset here today. Head coach Bob Stoops. In his fifth year at 45 and 9. Last year, of course, the Sooners 12 and 2, Big 12 champs, Rose Bowl champs. And sitting at the top of the pack today. Our weather. Boy, we had all kinds of rain earlier in the week, but right now 70 degrees. Humidity at 83%. Slight breeze. Clouding cools the forecast. We had some sprinkles before the ball game, but right now things are pretty good shape here, Dean. The field is in fantastic condition. Well, our highly paid weather people in this part of the country Boy, they were are. correct. They <laughs> no. That's what we need we, to get into. This the, gig doesn't work. No, uh, they, there's Pat Hill, by the way, the head coach here of uh, Fresno. Man, what a what a guy who, um, you know, Bill, you talk about uh, players personifying Bob Stoops. Well, his players personify him. That's the only way they can go play these teams. His group's at the top of the mid-majors, but they're not supposed to go play the Wisconsin's and the Ohio State's and the Tennessee's and the Oklahoma's and be able to hang in there. And they've done better than hang in there. He's a breath of fresh air because he says, bring it on. I want to take my program to the top, and the way to do it is you got to go on the road and know they aren't going to play you at your place, and let's go do it. That's how Bobby Bowden did it at Florida State, and that's the advice he gave Pat Hill, and he has been very successful. His attention back in 2001 when they won at Colorado and won at Wisconsin within a three-week period. Now folks around the country that follow Fresno know that Hey, they play in front of sellout crowds at home, and when they go on the road, they can contend with about anyone as OU will down the kick and bring it out of the 20. David Carr gives you a pretty good chance to beat about anybody. Yeah. First guy picked overall means you can play. Let's take a look at the starting offensive lineup for Oklahoma. Jason White, five touchdowns, one interception, and that one didn't hurt him. 63% on his completion percentage and his ability to throw the ball deep has really been kind of a trademark of Oklahoma's season thus far. The offensive lineman, Sim Shashan Carter, as well as the rest of the bunch, and we'll give you the backs in just a moment. Ronaldo Works is scheduled to get the start today, and he does as he lines up behind White. First and 10 at the Oklahoma 20. White in trouble, going to unload it, does, and completes it. And Brandon Jones with the grab. There's the offensive line, and we'll see some other people shuffle in there as well today. The backs and receivers, Works, Runnels, Clayton, Rankins, and Moses. Brandon Jones, we mentioned, comes in as a leading receiver at 17 grabs so far this season at 207 yards, tops in both categories. Second down and eight for the Sooners after a pickup of two. Clayton with a reception, breaks the tackle. Clayton at the 30, watch out, Clayton at the 40, the 50, needs a block. Clayton following interference at the 25 and knocked out of bounds. A small throw turns into a huge gain for the Sooners. McGill made the touchdown saving push out of bounds. What the Sooners like to do is take the short ones, high percentage throws, and let their outstanding receivers get yards after the catch. And Mark Clayton, he's not big, and he's not a 4-3 runner, but he is very elusive. He does not drop footballs. And watch number 81. 
That is Brandon Jones with an outstanding block to open the way. First and 10, Oklahoma at the 22 after a 56-yard pickup. White, incomplete. Nearest man in the secondary is James Sanders, but a flag is thrown. Let's take a look at the Fresno defense that comes in allowing 19 points per contest up front. Morris, Satelli, Booker, and Sanders. The linebackers, McGill, Andrews, and Adamo has been replaced here today as they've made a move there, although you'll see him back up in the middle and at the outside. And Washington, Visa, Sanders, and Dials are in the secondary. It's been a pass-first offense so far. First three plays, Sooners have put it in the air, and you like to, you hear a lot run to set up the pass. Today, it has to set up the run. Puts it at the 18 on the pass interference call. First down. Works. Cannot get away from the big grip of Danielle Booker. Booker's a guy they're very excited about, a junior from Houston, Texas, but out of Reedley Junior College, where he was an All-American. Played very well in the Oregon State win. Well, you kind of knew this play might be coming, and Booker, you better block him. You better at least put one guy on him, if not two, and he'll be in the backfield all day long if Oklahoma doesn't do a better job of blocking. Not only do they need to block better, but, uh, you know, Booker's an outstanding football player. Well, for our California viewers and those on the Fresno side, this Oklahoma offense is not totally in gear yet. They're only averaging 89 yards a game on the ground through the first two, something they're hoping to improve on. White on second and ten. And incomplete. No flag thrown here as double coverage there in the secondary. Mesa was covering as well as one other. Well, we'll see if it is a good call. Um, it's close. You know, that, that ball, can, you could basically say, I, probably what the official did, you're not going to catch it inbounds anyway. Makes it third and 16 in the ball at the 24-yard line. Third and 16 at the 24 of Fresno State. Isn't it interesting that one rush so far has them back, perhaps with a long field goal attempt. White, good protection here. And incomplete. Intended for Jawan Rankins, sophomore from North Carolina. One of the few missed passes from Jason White so far this season. Just a terrific job of pass protection. Offensive line has been criticized for their lack of successful running, but they've been a great pass blocking team. No sacks last week, but he missed the open man, which would have been a first down there in Rankins. Trey DiCarlo, five of six in field goals, will set up at the 31 for a 41-yard attempt. And Fresno, a team that is known over the years for blocking kicks, does not break through here, and this one is good. So Oklahoma gets the 56-yard pass play to set up the 41-yard field goal success by DiCarlo. Welcome back to Oklahoma, where the Sooners have tacked on a field goal to start things after their first offensive possession and a 56-yard pass play that set it all up from White to Clayton and then Trey DiCarlo with the 41-yarder, and he's now 6 of 7. And so many times, Dean, we talk about all the aspects of the game. We forget special teams, just success in the kicking game, and that's certainly been a big part of Oklahoma's story. You know, one of the things that has helped Oklahoma there, the number six plays, 57 yards, only a field goal out of that, and more in a moment. But one of the things that uh, Bob Stoops and company were able to do with that fake punt the other day is have people, the rush people, be a little bit more respectful of what can happen to them. Probably less chance of getting kicks blocked, although Fresno's very good at that. Bill, uh, this drive was looked pretty good early. Sooners come away only with a field goal. That happened last week twice on their first drives in the first quarter. They only came away with six points. And Oklahoma set now to kick it off as the Sooners <laughs> kick into one of the better kick return men in the country in Bernard Berry. <laughs> DiCarlo handles all the place kicking chores. DiCarlo has, uh, pardon me, Bill, he has uh, gotten stronger in the offseason and he's been able to kick the ball through the end zone for the most part. He'll be kicking into the win here and 
you better be ready to tackle number one. I mean, as you mentioned, Varian is a dangerous player with the football in his room. He's on the near side, number two. Jennings is number 18, and Jennings takes it at the four. Jennings, good strong force, strong tackle, brings him down. There's a flag. He is tackled near the 23-yard line. And as they sort out the flag, let's take a look at the Fresno offense here as the Bulldogs, led by their quarterback, Jeff Grady, a senior from Huntington Beach, California. And Grady last year threw for three touchdowns in 46% of the passing game, but he had a couple of hip pointers that set him back. And now this year, he's just been knocked around strong in the first two games by Tennessee and then again last week against Oregon State. But when they needed it, he made some critical throws in the fourth down, in the fourth quarter, Dean, that led them to victory. You know, they ought to just list where he feels good. You read the release, he's got a hurt hip, he's got a hurt knee, he's got a hurt shoulder. He's got <laughs> easier to say he feels good that's, here. That's right. In just the one or two places. And it's only the third game of the year. <laughs> Heinegger, who is their standout quarterback, is expected to be back soon and certainly for conference time. Well, the penalty was against Fresno State holding on the kick return. So instead of at the 23, they get it first and 10 at the 13. And that was like hitting a start button for the Oklahoma crowd. Had over 83,000 here, the largest crowd to ever see a game in the state of Oklahoma in the home opener with North Texas. And they have packed the joint again today. So first and 10. Bulldogs. Davis, the man in motion. Thrown out on the flat, and it is complete shy of the 15 yard line. Straight makes the tackle on Mark Hay Davis. Wow. And here's a look up front as Shaq, Young, Finnerty, Stevenson, a young offensive line for this team that uh, is finding its way. Davis, Spock, and Davis. Yes, they're brothers. Varian is a star receiver who missed last year because of an injury but was phenomenal in 2001. They're hoping today will be his breakout game. He has been throttled back so far. Second and nine, ball at the 14. And Grady completes it, but shy of the 20. And the tackle is made by Broadney Poole. Let's take a look at the Oklahoma defense that so far has been stellar, only allowing eight points a game. Jackson, Harris, Dvorak, and Cody. And Cody has been just phenomenal at that one end position. And Lehman, Mitchell, and Jackson, the linebackers. Mitchell's a guy that doesn't get the publicity Lehman does, but is their leading tackler. And Perkins, Brandon Everidge, Nicholson, and Strait in the secondary. And we have a player down here for Fresno State. It is Rodney Davis. Look at Brent Venables, the co-coordinators on the defensive side for the Sooners. And boy, they've got it together on this defense. Boy, don't they? I mean, they have great players, but then you have the passion of the uh, and, and the intellect uh, just in football of Mike Stoops and Brent Venables and that's quite a tandem. Uh, Bill Oklahoma is doing something a little bit differently today. They're going to be moving Dante Nicholson uh, number eight from a safety position. He'll still play a lot of safety but they're going to be moving him closer to the line of scrimmage a la Roy Williams. He's a similar uh, size guy to Roy Williams has great instincts like Roy and they don't back away from that comparison actually but look for number eight closer to the line of scrimmage today in normal situations. Rodney Davis their star running back from a year ago who's trying to get on track goes off with the injury and on third down it is incomplete on a third and four and Fresno will have to kick it away and some of the passionate OU fans that are on hand here today applauding their defensive work. Good series of coverage by the Sooners. Fresno was able to get it out of the end zone. It's tough to start far as far back as the Bulldogs did, but an outstanding series of coverage for Oklahoma. Lingua, Mike Lingua, stands on his five yard line to boot it away. Woo. Perkins backtracks up to catch it on the 30 and then goes back up field to the 35 yard line before he is brought down Antonio Perkins a junior from Lawton Oklahoma you see Fontenot in on the play there for Fresno State and Jennings as well and Oklahoma will get good field position here as they pick it up first and 10 at the 35 yard line 
Be interesting to see what the Sooners do on this series offensively because they had the bad run play that really put them in a hole. I think they were in short yardage and maybe a first and five, Bill, when they ran the football and got into bad situation. But it's pass first today, and the Sooners are a quick strike team. Now's not a bad time to see that. Runnels and Works line up behind the quarterback, Jason White on first and 10. And Works cuts his way forward for nearly five yards to the 40-yard line. Works out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, most consistent in the preseason and got the starting nod, got banged up a little bit in the North Texas win and came off the bench last week as Kiwan Jones got the bulk of the work. Mesa makes the tackle here. Sooners have not had any big long gains. Quentin Griffin gave it to him last week, last year rather. And you're going to see Works, Kiwan Jones, and a new guy, Dante Hickson, at running back, trying to find the guy for the Sooners. Second and five from the 40. And Clayton is the receiver, breaks a tackle, and finally knocked forward. He had the first down, almost gave it back, and then went back across that line and picks up about seven, and it will move the chains. Let's go down to Curtis Fitzpatrick on the sidelines. Yeah, guys, a little injury report. Rodney Davis, the running back for Fresno, just got his bell rung on that last series for Fresno. Looks like he's going to be okay. All right, thank you very much, Curtis. And we certainly, uh, Fresno, as you mentioned, they've had their share of knocks so far this year, and uh, they can no afford to lose a player of that stature. Hopefully he'll be able to come back to first and 10 at the 47 of Oklahoma. Works. Ronaldo works into Fresno State territory at the 44-yard line. That will count as a big gain for Ronaldo Works, but when you go back and look at it on tape, he didn't make anybody miss him. It was a great job by the offensive line. We'll see it again, but let's see what the running back does with an opportunity. No one around, no one around, no one around. Now you got to make a man miss you. Great young man, he's a good talent, but uh, Oklahoma coaches looked at it and say, nah, you gotta do more than that. He picks up nine, that matches his longest run of the year, the longest run of any back throw you as they hand it off again here for the season, Dean. has been a 14-yard carry 14, right. by Paul Thompson, right. the backup quarterback. So, yeah, for, so that was a quarterback play, you're right. Booker made the tackle this time on works, and Satelli goes off for the Bulldogs. Well, a lot of people look at Oklahoma and they'll say it's it's a finesse team, a finesse offense, and you really can't run well out of that. But last year, they got to where they could run well out of it, and that was one of the keys to the success they had in the latter part of the season last year. But anytime you run 75% shotgun, it's going to be difficult to be as effective as teams are who are under center more often. Just that last play, for example, it just takes longer to, to get the play in motion. Well, and... Bob Stoops and the coaches would tell you as you see the measurement there for the first down is it hey last year I don't know if Bob said this or not but one of the coaches said some of you folks meaning the media were kind of lumped in that whole group together you're ready to fire Quentin Griffin last year after right, two games right. because the running game had to hit its stride and then all of a sudden particularly after the Texas game <laughs> things really took off and they feel they have the capability here but I also get the feeling that by offering Hickson possibly some more yeah. playing time today, they're still looking for the right guy to say, hey, I want the job. Yeah, they aren't pleased at that position. They also need the tight end to emerge. And right now it looks like Bubba Moses is the guy, but still Chester has a chance. Donnelly has a chance. And they have a redshirt uh, freshman, Joe John Finley, who is an outstanding looking pro project or prospect rather. Oklahoma third and you saw it less than a yard. And works trying to push forward. Nice job by Fresno's front four, though, Oops, and they pushed everybody up in the box. Let's see where they place the football. Boy, it looks close. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't get it unless they get a great spot. And I'm sure Stoops will go for it if he doesn't make it. But uh, no measure again. Mason McGill leading the charge. Take a look at this Fresno bunch up front. Well, and that was the right side of the Sooner offensive line. It's a good, strong defense, but Davin Joseph, number 77, Jamal Brown, number 55, those guys go 6'4", 6'6", six, 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 and 313 pounds apiece. They will be playing in the pros together at some point, but they didn't even grab the, what was it, a foot? <laughs> They're short by an, about an inch, it appears, as Bob Stoops talks it over. They're on the 43 of Fresno State. And they'll be going for it as Jason White comes back into the huddle. 
Ninety percent of the time, Bill, in this situation, they bring Kiwan Jones in. They run a jumbo set. They run it straight up the gut, and it most always works. But teams, for the most part, know that it's coming at them. And we'll see if that's what Oklahoma does again. Jones lines up behind Runnels. Donnelly comes over the left side as the tight end, and Jones comes that way. He got the inch, <laughs> but well, he didn't get a yard, I don't think, though, as Mazer was there to make the tackle. Well, it's like the old days at Oklahoma and the wishbone. People knew they weren't going to pass. It's just sort of like, well, wishbone, but you can't stop it anyway. And you don't get much yardage on that play, but that's the exact scenario that I outlined for you. Fresno's a team that through the first two ball games this year in a one on one record, they're allowing 19 points a game. Their total defense is giving up 419 yards, including 197 on the ground and 222 through the air. They played at Tennessee now, no pads. Yeah. First and 10 and White nearly picked off intended for Rankins. <laughs> Morris, you see, out there covering, realizing what he had if he could have somehow held on to that bullet. Morris been a good guy, good player for Fresno, and uh, Jason White is not having his receivers open. The Sooners don't look as crisp in the passing game as it looked like they would in the first possession. Long way to go. See that V on the back of his helmet for those of you unaware, that's for the San Joaquin Valley, one of the great agriculture areas of the world that uh, Fresno State is centered in the middle of. And they certainly want to pay honor to that. Rankins on the reception and going from sideline to sideline to the 20, the 10, and knocked out of bounds. It'll be first and goal. Mesa made the stop that time, and Oklahoma again coming back through the air. Yards after catch. We saw it with Clayton. We'll see it here with another outstanding young receiver in Jawan Rankins. A little slip screen, a little underpass, and then you wait and see. Great setup there. Looks right, comes back left, and then just let the receiver do it. And a block downfield. Just a moment ago, ago there, didn't get a good look at it. That was Jones. 35 yards in the pickup. Rankins, who had four of his five receptions coming in here in the opener against UNT, has set him up for a scoring opportunity. And on the ground as Works nearly pops it into the end zone, is stopped inside the two, or the, uh, Jones stopped inside the two as Mesa makes the stop. Jones, a really strong runner. Not that big, 187 pounder, around five, out of listing 5'10", he's probably 5'8 and a half, but uh, watching Bill here explode through the tacklers. And that's what he can do right there. That's what he does best. Mesa tried to stand him up, but his momentum carried him inside the two. It's officially second and goal to go from the two yard line now. Fake to Jones. Touchdown, Sooners. Runnels on the reception. His second reception of the year, his first TD, and Oklahoma takes a nine to nothing lead. JD Runnels. Runnels is going to be as fine a fullback as you'll see on Owen Field. Bob Stoops loves this kid. He can block, he can run it. They don't ask him to do that very much, and he can catch the football very, very well for a for a stocky guy. He's another one that uh, some have listed at 6-1, and I saw him there or so ago, and he said 5'11", uh, which means Bill 5'10". But uh, he's a load. He's a really good player. 246 pounds regardless of the height, and the kick is blocked. And Oklahoma stopped on that as the first miss of the year for DiCarlo had been 6-6, six of six, but the Sooners get the TD pass, White sixth of the season, and lead it 9-0. Welcome back. Runnels with his first touchdown of the year in Oklahoma with a 9-0 lead. The top-ranked Sooners over the Bulldogs of Fresno State. The point after was blocked, but that followed a 10-play, 65-yard drive that took just 346 for Oklahoma to tack on its first touchdown of the day. Sooners will kick it off, and Barry. Switched on the return this time, and Barian takes it out to the 22-yard line. And that's 
where Fresno State will take over. Bill, Oklahoma has had three problems with special teams already this season. They've had two punts blocked and then the extra point. The extra point might have been kicked a little low by DiCarlo, but that's very unstoops like. And Fresno State had blocked two punts this year. Last year, they blocked three punts and three either point after or field goal attempts and been a trademark of Pat Hill's teams. About 42 punts since 97 when he came there. Grady to throw it on first and 10 and incomplete. Intended for number one, Mark K. Davis. Grady's thrown for 394 yards and one touchdown so far this season. As Pat Hill, his club last year going nine and five, eight and two in the WAC. Prior to that, 11 and three. His third year there, he shared the WAC title. He turned them around quickly. They will contend again this year. Second and ten, the ball on the 22. Barron popped on the play. Everidge with the bone-jarring tackle. Did he get the first down? He's at the 32-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. Well, that's a healthy spot. I think it's pretty fair, though, Bill. By the time he landed, it, uh, or when the whistle blew, he was farther back, as Brandon Everidge um, will often do to the ball carrier. Barion coming in, eight receptions, 108 yards, 13 and a half per reception, and a touchdown. Redshirted last year after a knee sprain early on against Wisconsin. Had the phenomenal junior year where he was an All-American. They throw it to him here, out on the flat. Oh, you smelled it. Not much of a gain on that play. Let's check out things back on the sidelines and Curtis Fitzpatrick. All right, guys, Christy Grady is the mother of both Jeff Grady, the Fresno quarterback, and Tommy Grady, the Oklahoma quarterback, who's a freshman this year. And we're going to get a couple words from her as she watches her son play. Uh, Christy, first of all, how did you let your youngest son get all the way to Oklahoma, get out of California? This is the school he picked, and this is where he wanted to go, so we were happy. All right, are you pretty nervous right now? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Second and 10 from the 32, and her son we completes the pass. Hey, would it be worse if both quarterbacks were playing? If both your sons were out there today, how would you, how would you be torn? That would be really hard, but this is not too hard right now. Jeff is a senior, and he's worked very hard to be in this position, so. And you've got your Oklahoma hat and your Fresno shirt. Yeah. Who are you, are you rooting all the way for Fresno? Is that what we're understanding? No, I, half my heart's here. All right, thank you. Back up to you, Bill. Not an easy deal, is it? I'd like to know how tall she is. <laughs> Jeff Grady, 6'2", and the other kid, Tommy Grady, 6'7", and a quarter, officially. Well, it's third and five for Jeff Grady and the Bulldogs right now. And a whistle stopped this one from getting underway. Were they late? Prior to the snap, oh, too much time. a delay of game yep. by the offense. Five yards. What's a killer? Ouch. That really hurts Fresno. Finally, yeah. making some momentum, yeah. getting some field position where you can bring out a little bit more of your arsenal, Dean, and then this a killer for Coach Hill and crew. What would you guess, Bill? Should know this, but I, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Third and whatever you were, what are you going to do? Convert? Uh, third and five. Well, I know, but before that, the third and a foot, you're going to convert 85, 90 percent. Now yeah. you're back there in a 30 percent range. And now it sits at third and ten. The ball on the 32. Deflected by Lehman, intended for Barrian. Teddy Lehman, a little bit of everywhere. Senior out of Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. I think you're seeing a combination of things. I think Grady's an average passer. I think they're going to bury in a lot. The Sooners are keying on him, and the Sooners have tremendous speed in the secondary and at linebacker in that case. Antonio Perkins will go deep for the University of Oklahoma. And Mike Lingua punted for an average of 35.8 through the first two games. Had 20 punts. There's a look. He got a lot of action in both Tennessee and Oregon State games. He stands on his 17. Four punt out of bounds. Thrown and 
see what they come up with. Lingua going off and the market around the 39, it appears, of Oklahoma. A 30 yard punt is what Lingua is going to get credit for. He's a red shirt freshman out of Canyon Country, California, and whoa. Oh, holding suitors. Yeah. Well, I thought I saw something other than just the ball going out of bounds flag as Bob Stoops looks it over. Oklahoma, nine penalties in the first two games for 90 yards. Certainly something in the North Texas game they saw too much of. Some personal fouls. They got that cleaned up for the most part last year. Yeah, because it was from the end of the kick, uh, first down for the Sooners. So you don't go back to the line of scrimmage and mark that off, or Fresno would have been, uh, would have continued their march. So but Oklahoma, not quite as good field position, obviously. First and 10 from the 29. Well, we'll see what Fresno can do, Bill, in terms of tackling, because the guys up front have tackled pretty well, but the players in the secondary have not corralled the Sooner wide receivers. It's killed them. Works back in at the running back spot. White. Complete to Brandon Jones. Brandon Jones making the reception good for the first down at the 41 yard line. Knocked out by Mesa. This is 11 men doing their job. Play action. Watch Ronaldo works 47. He knows if he's going to keep the job, he better do just that. This is a long throw, about 35 to 40 yards. He throws it on the money. Good route, good catch. So that's a perfect execution. Well, Jones. 10 grabs against North Texas, 121 yards, and then Chuck Long, offensive coordinator, saying, all right, we're going to test you. Can you follow that up? Well, he did last week with seven and a touchdown reception at Alabama. Now works. Pulls forward to the 43-yard line. And the first and 10 call, picks up a couple, and James Sanders, sophomore from Porterville, California, makes the tackle. Well, this type of play just takes, takes so long to develop. It's a stretch play, and Oklahoma's had success running it in the past, but uh, I guess when you're not running it well, nothing looks good, but these plays, when they take that long to develop, they, they just make it look tough. Great defense there, though. Oklahoma's 16 yards rushing, 115 passing. Second and eight. Incomplete. Tended on the near side. For Will Peoples, a junior from Humble, Texas. Honorable mention all conference pick a year ago, looking for his first reception this year. Morris and Booker, a little pressure that time on quarterback Jason White. And that's the only thing Fresno's going to have to do defensively if uh, they've done a good job of stopping the run. They're going to put some pressure on the quarterback like they do there. Yeah, that's great pressure on him. They want to get him on the ground all day long. Alabama did not do that. Sooners realize they have to keep number 18 vertical or they don't have a chance to, 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 to be successful long term. Third and eight from the 43. He's got all day and got a man. Wide open and complete for the first down inside the 45. That is Peoples and Anwan Dials made the tackle. He's hurt again. Peoples was hurt in a scrimmage and this was his first action coming back. White gets all day. Move the feet, move the feet, move the feet. Throws a strike. Let's watch and see the injury. It's like an it's, ankle maybe. Huh? Yeah, he had had an ankle knee injury before. And I am sure he is just, look how irritated he is, because that is obviously the same injury he had before. Last year, 39 grabs, 571 yards. Mentioned an all-conference honorable mention pick. And hobbled off here. First and 10 at the 43 of Fresno State. Jones. Nice read, and he cuts it up to the 36-yard line of the Bulldogs, where Brian Morris makes the stop. Another nice job. It's another one, though, Bill. And, and you know, it's easy to say great run, great job. But I, I'm trying to tell you from from what you want to compare that to a season ago with Quentin Griffin to have a championship team to, to be a great, great running team. Sometimes you're going to have to have that type of play bounce out and make you a long game. Yeah, instead of seven. 15 20. Because, because you don't have those chances yeah. very often. Kiwan Jones. Jones carrying it again here, stopped at the 35 yard line, picks up a yard, maybe more. 
And Dials making the tackle for Fresno State. Peoples went out. I wouldn't be surprised to see him stay out. I know that uh, Curtis on the sideline will probably have something for us soon. The best news, if there is any good news coming out of something like that, is that the Sooners have depth there. Six wide receivers. Peoples being attended to. Third and two. Ball at the 35. White stretching it out. He's upended, and then Jones hit just as he was trying to juggle and pull that one in. <laughs> so incomplete, and a fourth and one coming up for a fourth and two for the Sooners at the 35. It would be a 52-yard field goal attempt. McGill made the play defensively covering the receiver. I think this is a case where you probably go for it, especially coming off the kick that was blocked. That last play was an example of Jason White. When he was healthy, he would turn that one up and make the first down and quite a bit more. But that play with the issue with the knees, you know, you just got to pick your spots where you gamble. I think he could have picked it up, Bill, without really even getting hit as soon as we call timeout here. Well, and we'll take a break as well. We'll talk about how they've tried to control a little bit the motor of Jason White, keep him healthy, yet still let him play his game. We'll be right back with Oklahoma leading 9-0. Com. Welcome. Oklahoma with a 9 nothing lead. We've got 3.36 to go in the first period. Bill Land, Dean Blevins, Curtis Fitzpatrick with you. And good news, you saw Peoples is up and moving. And number one is Mark Bradley, who has certainly uh, burst on the scene here, coming over from the defensive side. And he's been out with a bit of an injury, too, Dean. They hope to get him back on the field soon. Yeah, he didn't uh, get much practice time this week. Don't practice, don't play. And he is uh, six one and a half, and the fastest player on the field for the Sooners. Or I would say fastest on the sideline. <laughs> you were pretty fast on the sideline. <laughs> hey, here's Oklahoma going for a fourth down. They're three of five in fourth down conversions so far this year. Fourth and two at the 35 of Fresno State. Jones looking for a hole, goes upside, dodges the bouncing helmet, has the first down as he goes out of bounds. Jones, whose hat got knocked off? That was J.D. Runnels. Let's just watch Runnels because he will be in the picture blocking out in front, number 38, and a great job by Shashan, number 70. There you see the helmet of 38. I'm telling you now, you can keep an eye on Runnels. Oh, Runnels said, doesn't matter, you take my hat away. McGill's the one that popped him there. He well, stayed with the block. J.D. has a neck similar to Mike Tyson. As if you can't find it. There is hopefully, well, yeah, hopefully what's up about six inches in JD's head is a little brighter than what's with Tyson. First and ten from the 29 and going for Jones. Incomplete. And a flag. Jason White. Boy, he has been so accurate with the deep ball, or medium and deep. Yeah, he has. He's missed a couple of balls early, Bill, but those were more of the intermediate route. Look at this ball. Look at this ball just perfectly over the top. That's a good call and would have been a touchdown. In fact, Jason has had three balls this year. That, that was a – what was the call? Did I miss it? I'm assuming it's interference. Well, that's what I thought, but let's wait and see here. Pass interference on the defense. Oh, okay. 15 yards from the previous spot and an automatic first down. Man, what a great play by the defense. You know, you give up seven or you want to give up the spot where Oklahoma picks it up here at the 14. Smart play. Yeah, and to me, smart play, but that means there's also something wrong with the rules. Yeah, I agree. That, yeah. You know, you go out and deliberately make right. a penalty, and it's the only thing you can do if you're beat on something like that. A little bit different if it goes first and goal, but at least then you're really paying for it. But first and 10 at the 15 for Oklahoma. Jones sets up to the right, was the man in motion. Right hands off to Jones. T1 Jones to the 10, a flag thrown as he bursts down inside the five. They've got a call holding on the corner on it. Looks like three, Jawan Rankins. McGill made the tackle. T1 Jones last year found the end zone 14 times. Looking for his first score here. It'll come back. 
Look at Bob Stoops face pretty well tells the story on that one. Yeah, I think that uh, Holding on the offense. 10 yards for the previous spot and replay first down. I think that Bob Stoops has to be happy with what he's seen for the most part uh, offensively and defensively, but the, but the mistakes. You know, they had the block kick and they've had several uh, penalties against them that are, have uh, caused a problem. And, Bill, it's a great example of what you were talking about the, the rule that you're calling silly. You make a touchdown on that probably on the next play if you spot it on the first or the one yard line or two. Now you have a holding call and you're back in a position where you could be looking at a 40 yard field goal attempt. Paul Thompson is the quarterback for Oklahoma here on first and 20, and they run the reverse. And Brandon Jones is tripped up at the 24 yard line. Everybody in their stadium in the stadium holding their collective breaths trying to find out what happened to number 18. This play just never does get underway. Nice curtailment by the Fresno defense though. Sanders there to make the play. And Jason White goes right back in. You're right. You hear the whole stadium is kind of like, wait a minute, what's the matter with Jason? <laughs> You've had back to back. Season ending knee injuries. You come out of the game at any point, folks are going, well, what's going on here? Second and 19 now from the 24 of the shotgun. White in trouble as they bring him. Sets him up for the screen. Kiwan Jones breaking tackles to the 10. Fumble. Oklahoma recovers. Very close to a first down as well. 155 to go in this first quarter. Man, there was a lot happening on that play. I don't know if I can do you a job in 15 seconds here, Bill, when we see a replay, because you see about everything. All right, great job setting this thing up. They almost had to call timeout because there was confusion. You see the blitz. You see the perfect timing. Kiwan Jones knows he has to fight to get a job, breaks tackles, and always from behind. That's where you see 80% of the fumbles. Oklahoma jumps on top and still will have to convert a third. That's where you see a lot of fumbles built from behind. And then Davin comes in for the fumble recovery. Joseph Davin. And makes it third and one. Works. And works. Touchdown, Oklahoma. The Sooners get six more. And before you pick up the phone and call, Davin Joseph with that fumble recovery. He's got my name backwards there. But it saved Oklahoma an opportunity, and they punch it in with works in the touchdown. Well, land bill. I mean, this was a <laughs> play that, all worse. that works. Ronaldo gets in the end zone without a problem. Great job blocking up front. And you had to think that that's what, where Oklahoma was going with the play. And, First rushing touchdown. So works in the end zone. DeCarlo with a point after, not blocked this time, and Oklahoma with 112 to go in the first. A 15 and 16 with a point after to nothing. Stay with us, the Sooners. 16, the Bulldogs, nothing here at Oklahoma. You might be pretty good, Bill. They may be pretty good. Well, I'll tell you what, impressive there. You know, particularly we mentioned with the penalties, but they're willing to overcome their mistakes, and that's just another sign. All right, that didn't bog them down. Works 11 play drive, 71 yards, and the six yard run for the touchdown. You know, this is a, an Oklahoma club that you you look at and you you kind of see offensively what they did at Alabama. They'll pick up four on a pass, pass play here, three, and they don't run it that well. But you know what? You look up at the end of the day. They put up 20 points. They've made first downs when they had to. They took the ball and ran off six and a half minutes of clock, first of the fourth quarter when they had to do it. Defensively, you know they're going to stop most people less than 15 points. Uh, if that quarterback stays healthy, this is a this is a pretty good football team, as if championship pedigree, huh? I would certainly think so. As you to meet the challenge every week, and certainly haven't shied away schedule-wise either. Spock takes the kick at the 20-yard line, and 
It'll be first and 10. You don't see that very often. That's a fullback with a fair catch at the 20-yard line. And... Well, you know, Oklahoma did that on purpose. That kick, the high, sh the, the, the short high kick was done on purpose and executed very well. They want to keep it away from Barion? I guess did. so. I guess so. If the guy's willing to give you a fair catch on a kickoff, wonderful. It's a conservative gamble. <laughs> First and 10 at the 20 for Fresno State and... Bulldogs with right on the carry. The first running play for Fresno State as we are inside the last minute of the first quarter. And Lehman makes the tackle. The Bulldogs, let's take a look at their standpoint right now. They got to get something going. They're going to get their defense yeah. off the field and at least exactly. kind of regroup. Don't yeah, they? they'll get worn out if they don't. There you see the numbers 183 to 23. Oklahoma controlling this one as many expected, but certainly we thought it would be a little bit. Closer battle to start with, at least. The defense has been superb as Voracek makes the stop here. Tommy Harris is healthy. There you see top of the screen, number 97. You better double him, which they end up doing, still makes the tackle. Bill, I'm telling you, there's no better defender in America, and people are going to see that when, as he likely comes out after this junior season, when you look up and see how high he's drafted. If he stays healthy this year, I mean, this guy is going to go, what, top five overall pick, maybe? Last year he had the groin injury that really nagged him all year, and he said he feels like a free man this year that he's healthy. Well, so's the rest of this Sooner Bunch. It's 16-0 Oklahoma after one. Welcome back to the Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium in Norman. Bill Land, Dean Blevins, Curtis Fitzpatrick with you here as the Sooners throw a first quarter shutout. That's been the case throughout the first three games now as no opponent has scored on Oklahoma in the first period. That's a pretty good habit to get into. And Fresno State has also, unfortunately for the Bulldogs, not scored in the first quarter through three games this year. So having to come from behind, not a trend that you want to develop. Jeff Grady sees it third and four to open the second quarter. Unloads it, nearly picked off by Mitchell. Mitchell got a paw on it, and a flag is thrown as well. Ever aggressive Oklahoma defense that time uh, Jonathan Jackson the top of the screen appeared to jump a little early. Never good especially on third and what a, an inch of shy third, of five so yeah, yeah. gives them the first gives down. Them, yeah. Well we're pretty good at our math. Aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so they talk it over with Barry. Well, you can see Fresno, first quarter, he gave you the numbers. Certainly not pretty for the Bulldogs, but I agree with Pat Hill's philosophy. Get it to that guy, Dean, because sure. he is the game breaker. He's sure. a guy that if he makes a play or two, all of a sudden it takes some pressure off of Grady and allows him to play a little bit more and do some things. But you also have to have a Grady making a play to take pressure off of him. You know, it's... Yep. Uh, what, what, what does that mean? you got to have a lot of good players. And, and then the pressure comes off of... Of any individual. Pass interference on the defense. It's a spot foul and an automatic first down. There's the bigger call. So I missed that one. Who? They both penalties on Oklahoma and the pass interference call and setting it up with a first and ten. And they'll get more yardage on it. A rare conversion for the Bulldogs, 16% on third down so far. Pat Hill, if you saw any of the game last week in Oregon State on Friday night, I asked him if he was all right after that one. I'll tell you what, he talked about a guy that was into the game as they came from behind a rowdy crowd out in Fresno. It's a great the offside penalty, penalty is five, is five, yards, five yards, and the yardage and the is yardage enough is for a first down. First down. Therefore, that Therefore, penalty that is going to be accepted. Be accepted. The, pass the pass interference on the defense, on the defense is, declined. is declined. Explain that one, partner. You're the color analyst. Uh, you don't yeah. have your choice in that situation, yeah. apparently. So, no, they they do. They decline. Decline the. Yeah, they decline the ladder. Whatever. It is first and ten. The ball on the 31-yard line. 
Basically, three plays, what happened there, and then they got the penalty with it, and Barian shows you some of his explosiveness as he's tackled at the 35-yard line by Everidge and Perkins. Well, that's where you have to have some support coming from the inside. You've got to have some safety help inside out because he's going to shake a lot of cornerbacks, and that time he did against Perkins, but number seven has become a more sure tackler. Everidge has been kind of a hit-and-miss guy, but this season, in only a second game, he's a more sure player. Second and six at the 35. And Berrien to the 37 and a half or so as Antonio Perkins is there to make the tackle for Oklahoma. So Fresno picking up yardage on those two high percentage passes. If Oklahoma misses the tackle, he goes. And now you're trying to set up the, the pump and go, the hitch and go. Third and three, crowd gets into it. Ball at the Bulldog 38-yard line. Fresno State trailing 16-0. Brady rolling out. Tosses it away. Well, you can't do that. You know what? You, 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 you can't do that. I mean, you've got to run it. You've got to reverse field. You've got to force a ball. I mean, That's force third it. down, not yeah. second. They yeah. can't do that. You come into a place like this, you're a four-touchdown underdog. You're behind 16 to nothing. Uh, can't do it. Got to give your team a shot somewhere. Fourth down and three now for Pat Hill's dogs, and they'll send Lingua back to kick as he's averaged 40 yards on his first two kicks, one of them a 51-yarder. Perkins is back for Oklahoma at his own 20-yard line. Lingua, no rush. Perkins, good strong tackle after a 46-yard punt. And we'll take a brief break. Fresno State trading Oklahoma 16-0. Sooner fans, young and old, got plenty to cheer about here today with its 16-0 second quarter, 13-32 to go. I think my little uh, boy Carson uh, is looking at this pay-per-view. Carson, no ideas, you know, just calm it, settle it down. <laughs> and how old is Carson? Carson is working on four. <laughs> Kelsey down the street's not going to like that. You got him on the weights yet? <laughs> He's playing golf. <laughs> Smart kid. First and ten at the 18 for Oklahoma. Kiwan Jones with a flag thrown, still chugging. And he takes it all the way out across the 33 to the 34-yard line. And Sanders, Claude Sanders, Lyman made the tackle. James Sanders is in the secondary for Fresno State. The good news for Oklahoma is that their, their receivers are blocking well downfield. And bad news is that they're holding downfield well, too. That time, Brandon Jones guilty of the hold for 81. Sooners in the first quarter, two penalties of 20 yards. Fresno State four for 35. Fresno has had some penalty problems this year as they came in with 13 for 128 yards through the first two games. Let's sort this one out with 13.22 to go before halftime. People around the stadium buzzing over some of the scores been flashed up on the scoreboard. Of course, the biggest. Uh, is that Oklahoma's big rival, Texas, falling in Austin to the Arkansas Razorbacks. Wow. To me, that was just a, a stunner, Bill. Um, holding holding on the offense. The offense. That penalty is declined. An illegal crackback crack block, block, block on the offense. The offense. Half the distance to the goal, to the goal. and we'll replay and first, we'll first down. First but anyway, I didn't see that one coming. Uh, you know, I guess I didn't know Matt Jones was that good a quarterback, but. Uh, I know that uh, Houston Nutt was very happy to get that win after the grief he had been taking about the hook em horn sign upside down. Uh, but for Oklahoma, Sooner fans probably wouldn't like that if they thought a lot about it because you want Texas to win every game except if you're going to lose one, lose it in the conference. Yeah, everybody in your league, you're pulling for everyone in your league until you get to conference play. Especially with this BCS match. White. That time and now breaks from the pocket and going to keep the football and just get out of bounds and a nice pickup as well. Man, that is so painful to watch. Hard I was going to ask you about that, Dean. Talk a little bit about because he was such an outstanding runner. How you tell him, well, don't run it all the time. Well, 
right now he has learned to be patient and sit in that pocket. Offensive coordinator Chuck Long says that that's become a long suit of his. And, you know, he says that, that Jason has become very patient. He understands the game so much more. And he knows what he's capable of doing. And the last thing that he has to, or that he, that he needs to do is get hit in that situation. Second down and nine, ball on the 19. Jones. Good strong run as he tugs and brings a couple with him out to the 27 yard line. Well, back to that other play, White two years ago yeah. cuts that up, yeah. makes the first down and, and more. Um, he was he was a really strong runner. I mean, he makes a lot of yardage on that a uh, couple of years ago, but uh, but not now. Speaking of making a lot of yardage, Oklahoma making a lot of yardage on this play recently, and uh, it's good strong running. The running backs are playing better today in terms of. Uh, busting through tackles and yards after carry. Hadn't seen a long one still. Jones, six carries for 28 yards so far. Oakland's rushing total at 51 on the day, 147 in the air, 198 total. Donnelly in motion as Oklahoma keeps it on the ground again, and Kiwan Jones spins and falls forward and has the first down out across near the 34-yard line for OU. One of the better offensive linemen through two and a half games for the Sooners is number 70, Shashan. Keep an eye on him here. Gets a good block backside. He has really played well. Another big player. He'll be on the left side of your screen. Left guard. Pulls. Opens away. 6-5-3-10. Beaumont, Texas, sophomore. Made some freshman All-America squads last year. Steps up, just missing, being tackled behind and going deep and incomplete. Brandon Jones battling in the secondary with Tyrone Culver of Fresno State. Well, the offensive line can only hold defender, defenders out so long, particularly when they get some blitzes off the corner. And Fresno's a club that has three or four blitz packages, so occasionally you're going to have some problems in picking people up. That time, White was able to buy a little bit of time, but not enough for the big completion. It looked there for just a second. with it on a second down and 10 from the 33 and out to the 46 yard line. It's a first down Sooners as Culver makes the tackle this time on works. This may be the longest rush from scrimmage from a running back. I believe it is. Again, Davin Joseph out front, great block by the right guard. That's good strong running right there. 13 yards it does match uh, what Kiwan Jones had done earlier this year, so making progress. First and 10 at the 46. Works back in behind Runnels. White short drop. Rankin spins, got the first down at Fresno State Territory near the 43 yard line of the Bulldogs as Jawan Rankins comes up with another reception. This is a pretty efficient offense right now. Juwan Rankins taking what the cornerback gives him, gives him a lot of space. The ball gets out there quickly, and he makes the yards after catch. Let's remind you that Fresno is ranked by Football News, College Football News, after a three-year study, the 26th best football program in the country. So it's not like OU's going out there against Norman High School. No, this is a team that last year, 9-5, and five, won in the... Uh, Silicon Valley Classic in the postseason bowl game over Georgia Tech. Hard hit on Rankins in the secondary at the 36 yard line was a point of contact. Dials making the tackle. One of the things that Jason White does that impresses me the most is he can get the ball, snap it here, they'll go quick toss to the right. They do. Works. It was effective, Dean. Fresno really wasn't set set, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I think they got the first down. Well, if, if you notice on that type of play, it's usually run near the, the, the bench that Oklahoma's on so they can make the call real quick. I don't know if we were in the screen at this at that time, if you could see the team, but they huddle basically at the line of scrimmage. You know, they don't huddle. They get up, and as quickly as Jason White sees it, they're set long enough to get the snap and pitch it to the short side of the field. 
Bob Stoops and crew always keeping you off balance. Adamo made the tackle there, first and 10 at the 31, as White surveys the scene. Jones, not much on that. Stopped at the 29-yard line, picks up two. Adamo was there. David is a junior from Fresno. Also, Brian Morris in on the tackle for the Bulldogs. Adamo's a good player. He and Garcia together are able to split some time and and keep some energy in there, Bill. I think what you're going to see is we talked about the, the number of plays that the defense is on the field right now. Uh, you, it's easy to get worn out. And Oklahoma coming in with the second best pass offense in the Big 12 behind Texas Tech. And they've thrown up 165 today. White wants to do it again here and does complete at the 29 yard line. Out of bounds inside the 20. Runnels out of the backfield with Culver making the tackle. That'll move the chains again for Oklahoma with 9.26 to go in the half. All right, we're going to see this again from the end zone, and you're going to see number 77, right guard. Watch Davin Joseph out in front of his quarterback. Does a great job. He's just chipping away there where Jason White has enough time to get off a play that he knew would be open if he could just have enough time to get it there. And there's my man, J.D. Runnels. Runnels sets it up first to 10 at the 17 of Fresno State. Sooners with a 16-0 lead looking for more. Kiwan Jones. Keeping the legs moving, gets across the 15 down to the 13-yard line, and Adamo making the tackle for the Bulldogs there. Bill, you think it's the same in terms of a defense tiring out um, with a team that's throwing it as much as Oklahoma? Pro probably not, but still, you don't like to see the ratio they've got. Yeah, and I think Fresno State, you just know coming in here that they're, they haven't turned it over, but you're looking to create a turnover. Yeah. If you can't slow yeah. a team down, if you come up with a big play, well, this is the 12th play of the series for Oklahoma. It's second down and six now as White back to pass. And complete. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Brandon Jones. 13 yards on the play, and Jones has his third score of the year. Junior from Texarkana. Jason White buys enough time. He knows with the rush coming from right there, the linebacker coming in, he's going to have a man open. It's going to be Brandon Jones. He can buy just enough time to find him. And Brandon Jones has just emerged, has evolved into a really strong receiver who can turn it, turn it up and make some extra yardage. Fake. Fake. They scoot right in for the two-point conversion for Oklahoma as the Sooners, Matt McCoy, he's been involved in that kind of stuff before, and they pick up a pair. That takes care of the blocked extra point earlier. Fans like this as much as a touchdown, and what Bob Stoops and company are doing is making other teams account for that type of play. Have to spend time on it in practice and be concerned about covering it. And the Sooner Schooner celebrates as White's 13-yard TD pass to Jones set up that two-point conversion. 24-0 Oklahoma and Fresno State. Jason White, no, he's not on our telecast, folks. You see the headset on there. <laughs> Talking to Chuck Long, I'm sure, up top. Dean, we we're just saying during the break, he's just playing so well, smart, doing everything right. I mean, you run out of adjectives to describe his playing. Even though he's a senior, he's not experienced. Not when you think of a senior. No, but he's seen enough tape and, and been a, in, in enough meetings, Bill. He's very experienced from that standpoint. Burying on the kickoff, scoots by a couple. He's very dangerous, 40, 45, and burying all the way out to midfield and moves it into Oklahoma territory. Bernard Berrien. Great opportunity for Berrien. He realizes that Sooner or later, you're going to have an opportunity in the kick game. It doesn't matter who you play. And against Oklahoma, which has taken the huge lead here early, that this is the chance. He gets him a seam, and now it's a short field at the 49-yard line. Travis Wilson, wideout, made the tackle for Oklahoma. That's a 42-yard return for Bernard Berrien. First and 10 Fresno State at the 49. Berrien again and tackled around the waist near the 47. Let's go down to Curtis on the sidelines. 
All right, guys, before the game, we talked about all the fake plays that Bob Stoops and company have been involved with here in the last couple of years. Matt McCoy was the guy who ran that two-point conversion is in. Here he is again last year throwing the pass to Chris Chester. Now all he has to do is catch one, and he'll uh, complete the trifecta. <laughs> Now that you made the suggestion, that play will probably go in next week, Dean. <laughs> Second down and eight. Brady comes out of the pocket, tucks it under, and he'll get massacred as he is stopped near the 43-yard line. Dan Cody, who's just been an absolute terror, junior out of Ada, making the big play for Oklahoma that time. Dan Cody. Cody. Four sacks already this year. Yeah, he can move. Oh, Oklahoma, Lance Mitchell is down. Looks like a lower body injury he's a t one tough cookie you don't he doesn't have him call I call time out unless it is something that uh, really hurts him and Mitchell one of the two Californians on the linebacking core with Pasha Jackson the other Lance from Los Banos California came in the leading tackler for the Sooners Ooh. Oh boy, that hurts to watch a play like that. That's the left knee. Now watch number 10. That's Mitchell. He is putting a lot of weight on it coming off. That's a great sign. Well, he's 6'3, 247. Kind of a compliment to Lehman. I mean, Lehman, you think of speed. Yeah, Mitchell, it really you think is. Of hit yeah. and thunder, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Lance Mitchell is one of the, the sh most sure tacklers, one of the surest tacklers I've ever seen. If you get near him, he's going to stick you, and he's going to be sticky. He was the Big 12 newcomer of the year last year in the defensive side. 124 tackles to lead the Sooners. Coming off slowly. Hopefully he is okay. Third and three, Bulldogs at the 42 of Oklahoma. 7.21 to go, first half. Brady, play action. Unloads Barion out of bounds. Well, that tells you how good Barion is. I think he was trying to throw it to the tuba on the second row over there in the Oklahoma, the pride of Oklahoma band, and Barion almost comes down with it in bounds. Burdine had put the pressure on the quarterback. Perkins going high, Barion trying to get it down and drag that other. Of course, Kyle just need the one in. But when he'll be playing, he'll need to learn to get both of them. <laughs> Fourth down and three. And they'll punt it away. Lingle trying to put it inside the 20. And Perkins with the fair catch on the 30 yard punt, but effective as Oklahoma will take over first and 10 in its own 13 yard line, it appears. That's one you probably look back and say you shouldn't fair catch it, but Perkins is very sure-handed. He's not having the explosive return season that he ended up having last year. He was extraordinarily good, reminiscent of Oklahoma days of, of a Joe Washington or a, or a Greg Pruitt. Here's what Oklahoma's done so far on their possessions with a field goal and then three straight touchdowns as they take over here. A little more difficult task field position wise as they've totaled 271 yards to 41 for the visitors from Fresno. And works stopped by Booker on that first down carry. And loss of three will make it second and 13 as Mitchell being attended to with the left knee. Dr. Brock Schnabel working on him and he's as fine and most, uh, he's as well respected as any doctor in the country. Second down 13 from the 10. White from the end zone. Dumps it off to Works. Got one block, got another, and then forges ahead to try to make something out of it. And a flag is thrown. Near the 11 yard line should be a face mask as McIntyre was in on the tackle.
Cooper Castleberry, the officials, got more air time than anybody did. <laughs> the penalties. Look here. There's the face mask. Yeah, good call. Five, should be five yarder, shouldn't it? Yeah, it looked uh, inadvertent. That's the key if you're going to pull someone down by the face, face mask, just make sure it looks <laughs> inadvertent. No matter how malicious it might be. Well, we laugh. Boy, talk about an injury. <laughs> that helmet turned around on yeah. you real quick. And yeah. You won't be able to look behind you for a week. Second down now and seven for the Sooners. The ball marked at the 16. Oklahoma. Bob Stoops club up 24 nothing. Clayton in motion. Dials coming on from the cornerback spot and force things up the middle and the tackle is made. Dials got him first and then following in was McGill to finish him off. Jones. You know, you see Lance Mitchell there obviously in pain. And I think that, um, you know, Oklahoma's up 24 to nothing, and they certainly have a lot of things to work on, and there's a lot of game left to go. But I think if you put true serum in it and you say, hey, what do you want to get out of here the rest of the game? And they'd say, we don't want to see the Lance Mitchells on the back. You know, you want to get out healthy. Third down and five for Oklahoma. Rankin's the man back and forth in motion. White has time again. Donnelly across the middle and breaks two tackles and has the first down to the 30-yard line. That's a great job of White. Watch him work through his progression here. Looks, the first receiver's not open. The second might be Donnelly, or he might have come off, checked down to his third receiver. Donnelly has gotten most of the snaps today. Let's see here. He's going left, going left. Comes back, Bill, and that's one of those things that, no, he hadn't been on the field as much, but he, he's gotten to where he's real comfortable in knowing where everyone is on the field. When you talk about their tight ends, Donnelly may be the most experienced overall. Moses athletic, and then Chester the blocker. In fact, Chester's worked some at center this week. Oh, you to throw it again on first down, and a great grab by Brandon Jones. Oh, my, Jones falling on his back and brings it down at the Fresno State 46-yard line. Jason White throws that thing up there where only Brandon Jones can catch it. And Billy's getting a, you'll see on the replay, he's getting a blitz from the top of the screen. He knows he has to get rid of it. And he says, I'm going to go ahead and just throw it up and see if my guy's as good as I think he is. This guy came in highly touted. He's an outstanding baseball prospect. And he has officially broken out. First and 10 at the 46 of the dogs. White to throw again. Got all day. Going deep. Incomplete flag thrown as Clayton, the intended receiver. Dials covering on the play. Came in with an interception this year. Bill, I think you mentioned earlier how accurate Jason White has been on the long ball. Interference on the defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. Pass interference there might have been the reason that that ball was just a little overthrown. And certainly, if it's not going to be on target, you want it to be a little overthrown than a little underthrown. Yeah, and White certainly had time there. Mitchell walking it off here. Fortunately, headed to the locker room early. Yeah. 4.17 to go here. First and 10 ball on the 31. Aldo works. Works. Running the daylight. Goes to the 15 yard line. And another first down for Oklahoma. Dials in on the play for the Bulldogs. Works has a little room to work with here. And Bill, he's shifty. I mean, for a guy that's 6'1", and, and right now he's probably about 225, he is a, an elusive runner. You know, he likes to break it out deep. That's a, t that's a part of the field where he had a run similar to that on a shuttle pass against Alabama last year. First and 10 at the 15, works the call again, trying to get in the end zone, and he does! Touchdown Sooners! And Works has got his second score of the day. 
Sooners make it a 30 to nothing ball game. Fifteen yard TD run and another lead block that was outstanding from fullback J.D. Runnels. And hey, do you think these running backs realize that the job's up for grabs? You know, they're really running strong. You can see with each carry that it is uh, serious to them. Now works coming in at 3.1 per carry. He gets his second TD of the game. DeCarlo's point after is up and good. It's 31-0 Oklahoma. Break in the action. We'll be right back here in Norman. Oklahoma 31, Fresno State nothing. And Ronaldo Works trying to make his statement that, hey, I want my share of playing time. He's a senior here at OU and Dean. He ran for 377 as a freshman, 306 as a sophomore, 148 last year. He's headed the wrong direction. He had a real good fall at summer camp, though, and he's a great kid. It's good to see some good things happen to him. Well, he's a, uh, an honor roll student, and he's one of those kids that never gets in trouble. He's very humble, doesn't say a lot. Um, he is one of the guys that you look at and you say you, you kind of hope that they do well. Fresno hoping to stop this OU onslaught. Let's go down to the sidelines to Curtis Kirkpatrick. All right, guys, it's starting to rain a little bit down here, and it's also raining a little bit on Oklahoma's parade. Lance Mitchell, as you guys saw, walking off uh, to the locker room, and uh, from all accounts, it looked pretty serious. Of course, we don't know the extent of the injury, but uh, a lot of down faces down here on the sideline. Well, that is tough, tough news to a Sooner team that sure has a chance to to win championships and when you say that it's multiple of course the, the big 12 championships very hard to win but if you do win that you probably play for a national championship first to 10 Fresno and Wright is racked at the 21 yard line Teddy Lehman there yeah and, and I think anytime well, if you look back to the championship at Oklahoma won a couple of years ago generally yeah, you got to fight through injuries, but also you've got to have some good luck when right. it comes to that area and not right. have key people lost for a long period of time. Right. And I certainly hope that it's not uh, very serious. With the knees, you never know. And Fresno State's finding out what it's like to play beat up as they come in here with a number of key players sideline. And second and ten, and Grady completes this one. Out of the backfield to Jamal Jones, a junior from Oakland, California. Well, Bill, in this game, I think we mentioned earlier that Dante Nicholson was moving up a lot more from strong safety into more of a linebacker role, closer to the line of scrimmage. Right now, he is up more as a linebacker. Gayron Allen, number 48, is in there, and of course, Layman. So you have Mitchell out and his California connection, Jackson, not playing much either. Makes it third and three. Barium with the reception. Not much. Back loss on the play to the 25 yard line. Antonio Perkins there to make the tackle. Grady's getting some completions before they are for short yardage or minus yardage. That'll bring on the busiest man for Fresno State, Mike Lingua, as he is punting yet again. His fifth punt of the day, he's been averaging 38 yards. Oklahoma has not had to punt the football yet. With 158 to go in the first half. Lingua from his own 10. Flag thrown. Fair yep. catch. Bill, that was an obvious and hold. We'll sort that out in a moment on a 40-yard punt. Here's the top 25. It's always interesting to me, Dean, early in the year, some people are over-evaluated. You just never know what to make of it but certainly Miami's victory last week was impressive in the style that they had Ohio State wins today in overtime USC to me the team that has kind of validated themselves with that big road win at Auburn I don't think there's any question uh, Ohio State you have to give credit to recognition to because they won them all last year they're obviously having some problems and they're not as good as they were a year ago but you have to respect them and Holy I think Miami's there I think USC's there in Oklahoma without question Replay the down. Arkansas is going to show up somewhere now. <laughs> yeah, Arkansas will. Texas will take a big drop. And the Big 12 will take certainly a bit of a hit with uh, the loss, particularly with it being in Austin. What will the radio shows be like in the Austin area tonight? 
Well, if I'm a Longhorn player or a coach, I probably just go ahead and listen to some music if I'm <laughs> driving back home and just say, I don't need that this evening. It, fans will be upset. You can bet that. Fourth down. Now backed up, kicking from the goal line. His lingua. Perkins from the 36. 45. Perkins still dancing, spins, and gets into Fresno territory at the 47 yard line. 19 yards on the return after a 49 yard kick. Flag is thrown again. Well, we talked about Perkins earlier that he's not done this much this year. Maybe a clip right there on the Sooners, or I don't think it's against them as I look down on the field watching this. But uh, I tell you what, Perkins, you take him above about any running back in the, or a, a punt returner in the country, Bill. Personal foul, well, grabbing the face mask on the kicking team. You hear the call, personal the foul, run. grabbing the face mask, 15 yards in the kicking team. And Perkins had only been averaging six yards per punt return as long as 18. He got 19 on that one. So he's giving you an idea of what, what he's capable of doing. Well, this has to be an opportunity here for Oklahoma to not punt again. And that would be an entire half that you would have seen Sooners not punting. Well, you saw 29. That's Will Peoples, who we saw get injured earlier back in. He's the top of your screen here. Flanked out to the left on a first and 10 from the 32. And Jason White goes that direction. That's a good sign as Garcia makes the tackle. Todd Garcia, Jr. from Corcoran, California. Well, you talk about a team playing back on its heels right now and that just came out in the first round and got waylaid, knocked down. Fresno's the team. Yeah, not what Pat Hill was expecting coming in here today as his ball club after the big win over Oregon State. We could go Friday and got in town in on Thursday, walked through here yesterday. Nothing has gone their way against this talented OU bunch. Here is work, stringing it out. Then pushes his way forward to the 20 yard line, stayed in bounds with 119 and counting here in the second quarter. Bill Land, Dean Blevins, and Curtis Fitzpatrick with you here at Oklahoma. Andrew's making the tackle on that play. I want to remind you, stay with us at halftime. We hope to visit with Coach Stoops as he goes off and also find out a little bit more about the Oklahoma basketball program. Sherry Cole on the women's side, Kelvin Sampson, the men's coach, and athletic director Jokas Tidley will also be with us. And the OU Bank. Sooners now probably will have to work the clock a little bit. Uh, Brandon Jones should have gotten out, out of bounds, I think, in a perfect scenario. Oklahoma with two timeouts to go here, though, with 55 seconds. And some would say, why pour it on? My theory is, Dean, whatever you can do in one half, your opponent can do in the second half. Well, you're out there to score points. I mean, second and seven, and White trying to connect there. I'm not sure if he was going to Jones or was it Travis Wilson? Well, there's confusion. He was, uh, it wasn't a bad pass. I think he was just confused as to where to go, but it, the field look, looked open. Might have been too surprised to see two receivers open. Did stop the clock, 41 seconds remaining, third and seven, with the ball on the 17 of Fresno State. Sooners led to 16-0 after the first quarter. And now a timeout is called by the Bulldogs. With a 31 nothing. Well, some folks were concerned that Oklahoma would let down a little bit after the big road win at Alabama. Let's look at their schedule and see what other potholes are ahead. I don't think they'll have any trouble getting up for UCLA. At Iowa State might be a problem knowing Texas is the next week, and it appears the Cyclones are a little bit down this year. Yeah, and you're talking about emotion, so I, I think you're right there. Texas is not a problem emotionally. You know, Missouri almost got them last year, and they've got an outstanding quarterback in Brad Smith. That might, might be a, a let-me-down game. I know the Sooners are looking forward to Colorado again. That's quite a run, though. Look at that. Oh, Texas, yeah, Missouri, yeah. Colorado, Oklahoma State, a and Right. Well, you know, you get in the South, you get in the yeah. conference, it's going to be that way. But 
Uh, 11 1 is a, is a game that uh, has been circled not only for this year, but for the last year or two. You know, people who think that Oklahoma just didn't show up to play last year in Stillwater, that they're not right. Uh, OSU played great football against them that day, but I know Oklahoma is planning on something big for the Cowboys on that day. Cowboys have won the last two and certainly uh, has jet setted less miles to uh, take an OSU to bigger and better things. Third down and seven, ball on the 17, following the timeout with 41 seconds to go for White and crew. Got time, unloads, complete touchdown, Clayton! What a grab in the end zone. And Jason White right on the money again. Jason White is in fuego. And he does a great job. Watch him look off to the right, Bill. He looks people's, people's pump fakes. And he knows he gets his man open by just a nose over the linebacker underneath the safety. Cornerback not a factor. That's pretty impressive right there, and what a remarkable catch on top of that. This is this might be the best receiving core that Oklahoma has maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe ever had. They got too hurt right now, Bill, and they thought that some people thought that might be a, a problem for them at wide receiver, but these young receivers are big and talented. Pat Hill walks the sidelines wondering where in, what is the answer? Well, White with his third touchdown pass of the half, and Oklahoma bumps that lead to 38 to nothing on DeCarlo's point after. Five plays, 32 yards, and required 58 seconds. And let's go down to Curtis Fitzpatrick. All right, Bill, more bad news for Oklahoma. Again, we don't know the extent of the injury, but Derek Strait now is walking to the locker room early, and he also appears to uh, be favoring one of the knees. It looks like his left knee is hurt, and uh, he's going to the locker room right now. Well, we mentioned at the beginning of the show, they got an all-star lineup on defense. Well, two of those major stars go into the locker room early with injury concerns. And Derek Strait, of course, a first-team all-conference pick. Wow, that hurts. There's some scores to react to, Dean, as uh, Iowa stops a five-year run of Iowa State wins today. The two players you're talking about for OU are top three-round uh, draft picks. So, yeah, Arkansas, just uh, a, a stunner. Iowa, Chuck Long has to be happy with that one. And Missouri up early. More scores a little later. Missouri and Eastern Illinois today for Tigers going one double leg. And Carlo puts it out of the NC out of the end zone, and it'll be with 35 seconds on the clock. See what Fresno decides to do with it here as the Bulldogs down 38 to nothing. And and Brady comes back on. Well, game's not over, but I'm at this point just uh, more stunned with this than I am the Arkansas win over Texas. This has been a terrific performance by the Sooners, and they have just made the Fresno offense look uh, non existent. Yeah, I don't know what you say, your butt cheer, as Brady scrambling again, and he is brought down at the 16-yard line. A loss of four in the play. Larry Burdine makes the tackle. It's redshirt freshman from Lawton of Eisenhower High School, and young and old, they all play, they all run on defense for Oklahoma. Yeah, redshirt freshman Billy makes plays, still young and learning. Timeout Fresno State. Fans booing, I don't think they know Pat Hill very well. Yeah. You know, not many coaches would be calling timeout here. Well, you you don't need to worry about him bringing up a white flag at any time today. Yeah. I mean, Pat Hill's in, hey, I'm in this thing the long haul. We got, we played in front of, what, 108,000 down at Tennessee two weeks ago. So we've been to a lot of places. Let's take a look at some other scores around the country as they, uh, there's Penninger, he'd love to have him yeah. lined up and play. K-State manhandling Massachusetts today, 38-7. to L. Roberson out, of course. Colorado. Washington stayed up on them by 10. Kansas on the road today, winning at Wyoming 28-14. And you know, last week Kansas pummeled UNLV and Wyoming beat Wisconsin today. Right. And Wyoming pummeled in Stillwater, Oklahoma State. And some other games to keep an eye on. 
Southwest Missouri State visits Stillwater and Boone Pickens Stadium tonight. There's a pillow fight down in Dallas, or I guess that one's in Waco. Waco. SMU and Baylor go at it. Guy Morris making sure he has ahead of him. <laughs> Second down and 14. Grady. Incomplete. Stops the clock. Eight seconds remaining. And Burdine giving chase again. You know, the other, speaking of the WAC, where Fresno State, of course, resides, uh, Hawaii, another WAC team, plays Southern Cal. And uh, June Jones, another guy that, I say go anywhere. Well, no, he'll pick his spots because he'll get people to return games at Hawaii. But yeah. that could be a very interesting uh -huh. game. Uh, Tommy Chang, their quarterback, he gets hot. Uh, you never know what might happen, even though USC is uh, an obvious favorite there. Third down and 14, the ball on the 16 should be the final play, and they'll keep it on the ground here as Wright runs it out as the sun comes out in full force to end the half. Well, it's been shining brightly on the OU sideline all day with a 38 to nothing halftime lead. The Sooners up 38 nothing, and let's go down to Curtis. Bob Stoops. All right, we're here with Bob Stoops, center head coach. Coach, I would think one of the more complete efforts, if not the most complete effort and a half for you guys. It really has been. Offense has just been almost perfect. Uh, defense the same way has really been solid and um, really proud of our guys. They're, they're really executing in a great way. Finally, I don't know if there's any information you could share, if you have any, on, on Lance no. Mitchell, Derek Strait. No. Okay. Bob Stoops, uh, obviously happy with the way his team has played this half. We'll find out hopefully more on the injury situation with uh, Lance Mitchell and Derek Strait. Sooners leading at halftime, 38 to nothing in this one. Welcome back to Owen Field. Curtis Fitzpatrick here on the sidelines. Oklahoma leading Fresno State 38 to nothing. Kelvin Sampson, the Sooner head basketball coach, joining us. And Kelvin, I've heard this question asked of you a lot. How do you deal with trying to, to build the Oklahoma basketball reputation as you guys, you guys have done over the last couple of years? You get to a Final Four, you go to the Final Eight, and you're walking into the football stadium, and then you see 80-plus thousand fans. How do you deal with the football mentality in this state? as you're trying to build your program? Well, I think it comes down to an umbrella. We're at the University of Oklahoma. You know, there's very few programs in the country that realistically can compete for a national championship in both sports. But, you know, we have great fans. You know, these, these fans, when football's over, they go down to Loy Noble. You know, a lot is made of uh, successes, but one of the things we've been most proud of is we had the nation's longest home court winning streak in 37 games. Our fans were a big part of that. And you're getting ready to embark on a journey that you haven't been through in a while. You're getting ready to go into a season without Hollis Price. What's that going to be like? Well, Curtis, I'm not sure. <laughs> but we're excited about our young kids. You know, Hollis and Ebby and Qantas and Joseph um, represented a tremendous era, especially Hollis being here for four years in Sooner basketball. But, you know, we start a new one. You know, uh, D'Angelo Alexander and Kevin Bookout will be going in their sophomore year. Uh, Jason Dietrich, Jabari Brown, seniors, um, Johnny Gilbert being a junior. we got a lot of good veterans coming back, and we're really, really excited about our young kids. So uh, we're excited about a new era. And you brought up the new kids. We're going to look at some video of some recent activity. You had a chance to go to Costa Rica and actually work with some guys before practice started. And we're going to look at one of your future stars at point guard, Andrew Lavin, and talk about him a little bit. Well, Andrew's a true point guard. A lot of times, Curtis, you'll recruit a guard and try to make him a point, but he is what he is. He's exciting. He's tough, he's strong. You know, sometimes we make too much out of uh, uh, height or how tall a kid is, but he can play. He was a, he was a point guard. You see that inside pass there to Kevin Book out, leading the break, passing back to Jason Duke earlier. But, you know, he's one of those kids that makes the game easy. And uh, our fans are really, really going to be excited about watching this kid play. What was that experience like, getting to work with these guys earlier than most teams get to work with their incoming and uh, veteran players? You kind of got a head start on people you know and it's important for this team i mean you know we have um 12 kids on our team eight of them are freshmen and sophomores that's a little bit younger than we're used to so 
being able to get the 10 practices in, play the four games, was really important for this team because when we go to practice in October, October 18th, we're going to be a little bit ahead. They'll know what to expect from me. I'll know a little bit what to expect from them. Uh, they'll, they know our drills, and uh, it'll, it'll help make us a little bit better in November, December. All right, thanks for stopping by, Kelvin. All right, Curtis. All right, Kelvin Sampson, Sooner head basketball coach, obviously excited about his team coming up this year. Sooners leading at halftime, 38 to nothing. We'll have Joe Castiglione, the Sooner athletic director, coming up after the break. Welcome back. It's halftime here at the University of Oklahoma on Fox Sports Net. Fresno State trailing the Sooners, number one ranked Oklahoma with a 38 to nothing halftime lead. Well, earlier, we had a chance to hear about the men's basketball program with Kelvin Sampson. We're glad to have Sherry Cole, the women's basketball coach here with us. And uh, glad to have you aboard, Sherry. Fun to be aboard watching Oklahoma football these days, isn't it? Yeah, I ran into Chuck Long in the hall on my way up and said, if you guys need any pointers on how to score, <laughs> I'm available for halftime. Well, you like to fast break. <laughs> Last year, you had to slow it down a little bit at times because of just a slew of unbelievable injuries. Kind of update us as to, uh, you said knock on wood earlier, appears you're going to be healthy this year, and tell us about those players that are coming back from injury. Everybody's doing great right now. Caden Hill, obviously, is the one most people are concerned about. Yes, she is coming back. She's spending her fifth year with us, and she's doing great. Uh, just looks terrific, looks strong and confident and healthy. Aaron Higgins is back and feeling great. Casey Walker, redshirt freshman last year, 6'3 kid, who will give us that bulk inside. A, a, Real strong player, a kid that may be a sleeper, a kid that when we signed you didn't really know. Maybe the year last year to work on weights and being off the knee was a blessing in disguise for her. So we take those guys and add four new freshmen. And uh, I think I heard Kelvin say he had eight guys who were freshmen and sophomores, but we got 10. So we're young, but yet when you mix in kids like Caden Hill and Deanna Jackson, you have youth and experience. And after last season, uh, talk about a blessing in disguise. Our, our team was really melded together through what happened. You know, the shared suffering of losing those kids last year gave us something special, and, and we're excited about reaping the benefits from it this season. I was going to say, you had some players who got some experience that had, you, had your druthers. You'd say, oh, well, I'd like to bring them along slowly. Well, now you hopefully you get the benefit of that. Will this be as deep a team as you've had? I think it will be. I think at each position will be too deep. I think we'll be extremely versatile. And I think we'll have um, uh, a basketball IQ that we might not have had otherwise because those kids like Chelsea Welch and Becky Preston were just thrown out there. And, you know, for their confidence sake, you would like to be able to ease them in a little more the way Deanna Jackson got to with our Final Four team. Can't always be perfect, though. And those kids, I tell you what, by the end of the year, Chelsea Welch, uh, obviously co-Big 12 Rookie of the Year, and then Becky Preston, the strides she made. We're excited about having those kids back as sophomores. Well, the Big 12's an easy conference. You ought to run to another league title, right? Piece of cake. <laughs> you just show up. What happens in the league this year? Who are the favorites, in your opinion? I think, obviously, Texas is going to be a favorite. They return all those kids off the team that went to the Final Four. They're balanced. Uh, uh, at leadership of Jamie Carey, I, I think they're probably the team to beat. Kansas State obviously remains talented, and now they're very experienced. Texas Tech, you're never going to count a Marsha Sharp team out. Uh, Colorado, you're never going to count a Seal Berry team out. It's going to be another tough year. Well, I know you will more than hold your own. Uh, congratulations, just a great run so far, and good luck this year. Thank you, Bill. Sherry Cole, the head basketball coach here, University of Oklahoma women's program. Let's go down to Curtis now. He's got the athletic director, Joe Castiglione, with him. All right, Bill, we're here with a couple guys that are living pretty good lives right now. Your football team's up 38 to nothing at halftime. You're looking at a newly renovated stadium, 80-plus thousand fans here. And some good news recently, Joe Castiglione, David Bourne, the Oklahoma president, number one in graduation in the Big 12. Pretty positive news for your program. Well, it really is, and it's a credit to, first, the student athletes. Let's give them all the credit because they're the ones that are making it happen. But certainly to coaches that uphold a certain standard, our academic staff, Dr. Gerald Gurney and his uh, tutors, uh, counselors, all of them that do a great job. And it proves that uh, when we set the bar high to try to be the best program across the board, that it can be done and be done the right way. And certainly when we have this guy on my right setting the tone campus wide, we really feel that anything we could do to reflect positively on the rest of the campus, we step up and try to make happen. Well, President Moore, I know the graduation rates are putting a smile on your face every day. Well, well, they really do, you know, and it helps to have, he's being modest here, the, the number one athletic director in the United States leading the program because uh, Joe Castiglione is a person that strives for excellence in all areas. You know, sometimes people ask me, 
you know, to be number one in athletics, does it mean you can't be number one in academics? And I think that's exactly what we're proving. Excellence begets excellence. We want to be at the top ranks, both academically and athletically. And we've done that. We have a group of coaches who believe in it and just did my heart good. Look all around the news media of the country, USA Today, the New York Times. See that number one football ranking and off to the side, that number one academic ranking. It uh, really makes us proud of Sooners. I know we're going to see some video of the construction of the uh, new addition to the football stadium. Is this what you guys envisioned and even more? So? Maybe more so. Um, not that we didn't have every little trick that we tried to pull out to make it the best possible facility. But the part that makes it the most gratifying is that the fans that are enjoying this are telling us that it exceeded any possible expectation that they had. And I think that it really ties this facility in to, a, to the campus more than it ever has before. We have so much beauty going on all around it. And Super now the, the shrine for football is really, a lot of people like to call it, reflects positively on the campus as well. In many ways, it's like the front door to the university. It's the facility most people see. And it's the same for our student athletes. They're the ambassadors. They're the people that uh, people across the country get to know us through our student athletes. And when you see the beauty of this stadium, the fact that it's state of the art, it makes a statement about excellence. And our student athletes are the same way. It's a, it's a wonderful way for other people across the country to get to know about the University of Oklahoma. You know what's even nicer? We have more than 83,000 here every Saturday now cheering on the team. And that makes it even more special. We appreciate you guys coming by. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you very much. All right, a couple of guys with smiles on their faces. 38 to nothing, Oklahoma leading at half time here at Owen Field. Welcome back. It's halftime here at the University of Oklahoma. Sooners with a 38 to nothing lead over Fresno State. Bill Land and Dean Blevins up top with you here. I'm just trying to think, all right, what does Bob Stoops tell his team? Well, I mean, you always get better, right? But you know, without being a smart aleck, what you do say, and that's quite hard sometimes. To, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> when we get together, um, it's it's to play hard. You know, it, it's to come out uh, and don't lose your focus. Uh, reserves will be getting in, but uh, get them in as soon as you can. Guys, go ahead and let's try to crank this thing up. Keep doing what you're doing because you've got a almost perfect day going. I think the other thing he says, and he's told me this before, is that. Uh, his teams in the past have not had a lot of injuries because he thinks that they play hard. And overall, he thinks that there are less injuries when teams play, 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 play. Sooners have had a couple of injuries here, some scares, and I think that they will be looking for that, looking out for that, and to make sure you play hard to minimize that. Play hard, and then also maybe you do get your guys out there a little bit sooner yeah, than maybe you normally sooner, would. Right. Uh, get some valuable playing time for some of the other players. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. It has been all Oklahoma. There is certainly no secret about that. Jason White's had an unbelievable first half. Yeah, he has. He had one uh, interfered with in the end zone, or it probably would have been a four touchdown first half, and they cranked him on the ground as well. Ronaldo works a moment ago and Brandon Jones a real strong receiver and Jason Whiteville is coming back he's working through his progression very well nifty run here for a guy trying to solidify himself as a starter and works and Clayton is really a go-to guy although with Brandon Jones playing as well as he has you don't know if he's the go-to guy or not the offense has been more than efficient. The defense has been dominant, and it adds up to 38-0 at the half. Welcome back to the University of Oklahoma. Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium as the Sooners with a 38-0 lead over Fresno State. Bill Land, Dean Blevins, Curtis Fitzpatrick with you here on Fox Sports Net. As Oklahoma, as impressive as they've been by that score, we have a chance to take a look at the stats. You'll see that they've been impressive statistically as well here. And the other side, Fresno State, Pat Hill, what do you think he told his troops? Forget the scoreboard, try to get better in the second half? Well, I think you, you have to. I mean, I don't think you uh, look at the scoreboard. I don't think you go in and say, guys, we got two first downs. They got 23. You know, let's go home. Uh, you may say that we he may say we can't go home. It's not an option. I may want to put you on a bus right now. They would say, Coach, can't we fly? And he'd say, no, let's get on a bus. <laughs> um, no, I think he's got to see improvement in the second half. You start over here, and, and I, I just think that this team has played so poorly. Oklahoma's played so bad 
that he has to believe that they will play better in the second half. Let's take a look how bad. Let's take a look at the stats here, and they will certainly tell uh, the story. As D mentioned, 23 to 2 in first downs. I've never seen a 21 first down disparity. If I have, I certainly haven't seen it in the first half. And you look at the third downs, Fresno State 0 of 6. Uh, Oklahoma has had a few penalties. It certainly would keep it from being maybe a perfect performance, but Bob Stoops a pretty tough grader. And when he's telling Curtis there at the half that, well, I'm pleased, I'm happy, that the, you know things are going very well. And let's see if Fresno can fight its way back into trying to make the second half a ball game as they'll receive to start things off. And DiCarlo kicks it deep. Jennings two yards deep in the end zone, and Varian says, nope. We don't need to start in a hole here. Let's just bring it out. Advises him to take a knee. And it'll be first and 10 Bulldogs from their own 20 yard line. And Jeff Grady will come back on. Now, Grady in the first half, 9 of 15. That doesn't seem too bad. But for just 30 yards, they did not have any intercepted. Last week, he threw three picks against Oregon State. But he also completed 22 for 276 yards and a score. Bassey starting at corner in place of straight. Some straight hobbled off at the end of the half. And first down carry for Fresno State. And Gayron Allen was in the lineup. Remember Mitchell, we mentioned him being hurt in the first half as well. Well, Allen comes on to make the tackle here. He's a junior from Orange, Texas. And I know a lot of people are wanting to know immediately about Lance Mitchell and also Derek Strait, their condition. But I'll tell you what, we're really restricted. As you saw, Bob Stoops had nothing to say about it. And the NCAA really has cracked down, Bill, on, on what information will be given out. Timeout is called here by Fresno State. And we'll take a brief break. We'll come back with more here as the third quarter just underway in Oklahoma with a 38-0 lead. Jeff Grady following the timeout of second and eight ball on the 22. So Oklahoma already confusing Fresno State after one play in the second half. Keeping it on the ground again with the handoff. Dante Nicholson on the stop. The safety playing closer to the line, as we've mentioned a couple of times. And well, I'll tell you what, Bill, they're really high on this guy. I mean, he's a 6'2", 210-pound junior college transfer out of California. And they, they knew when they first signed him that he would fit in immediately, and he has. I mean, just a piece of the puzzle they really needed to fill. Last year, Bassey wasn't really what they were looking for back there, and he's a big, strong, physical guy with wonderful instincts. Well, when they recruit junior college players here, you know they're studs because their talent level is so deep anyway. And if a guy's coming in, he's going to be a player. Jennings is the receiver on the play here. Perkins makes the tackle. Harris, I believe, had the pressure in there. Look at the spin inside by Tommy. You know, there's so much effort given, and man, they double him up, and he can't go. That's a good job offensively. But do you, do you not think... The catch coming first down. Nice job there. Nice job of picking up the first down and coming back from Grady. But if you don't think off defensive linemen put forth, exert a lot of uh, pressure and energy right there, you can tell it. That's why they need to be rotated. First and 10 at the 30 and Sumlin. Tackle by Nicholson. Well, does Tommy Harris let down when his team's up 38 to nothing? Watch 97, top of your screen. Blows through there, doesn't get the ball carrier. But that's one of the things that he is so disruptive, Bill. He opens the way for other players to make tackles. His numbers at the end of the day, they, you won't look at, look at it and say, man, he just had a great day. But he really, he may well have had a great day. It's not statistical. Greco in motion, second and eight. Again, nothing doing against that front. Yeah, Harris, well, first two games, five tackles, three of them for loss, had a sack, four hurries. You just look at those numbers and say, well, I guess that guy's okay. But when you see the havoc that's created or a Cody getting four sacks, I mean, something's got to give if you're going to put right. two on number 97. Right, exactly. 
Nicholson and Allen made the stop that time for Oklahoma. Third and seven. Ball at the 33 of the Bulldogs. 12-11 first. They're remaining on the clock for the third quarter. Grady. Boy, they collapsed on him, and it yep. is picked off. We're going to say no. Trapped as Everidge coming up with what he thought was the interception. Nicholson, pressure on the quarterback. Though. Boy, what timing. What, what speed. Off the corner, that's just a tremendous job by the guy we were just talking about, and Nicholson. Comes from the backside. I haven't seen the interceptions that you might expect from the Oklahoma secondary today, but really there haven't been many uh, high-risk throws from Grady. Fourth and seven. Lingua will come on to punt it away. He averaged 40 yards a kick in the first half. He had plenty of opportunities, and Perkins got some help across midfield. Perkins. And then brought down to the 45, and a flag is thrown there. That'll be against Fresno State. There's one way back there, though, on the 35 that might be a clip on the Sooners. Fontenot made the tackle for the Bulldogs. There he is as Oklahoma trying to get its first possession of the second half. Yeah, that, uh, that would have been a clip by the Sooners right there. The penalty you're speaking of, Bill, might have been offsetting. Well, we'll Apparently not. Mar no, marching back in Oklahoma. There were two blocks in the back by the receiving team. One will be refused. One will be enforced. Ten yards, and it's first down. Bob Stoops not happy with Clint Ingram on that particular play and Ingram's going to be getting some action in there. He actually backs up Lance Mitchell. He is number 44. So Oklahoma. A huge loss on that exchange. First and 10 from the 24. Kiwan Jones wrapped up after he crosses the 25 stop at the 26 yard line. Jones in the first half, 10 carries, 41 yards. Works had 13 carries for 66 yards. And Works also had a pair of touchdowns. Now got 16 in his career. Morrison Andrews made the tackle that time for Fresno on Kiwan. There's his work so far today. The most impressive stat for Oklahoma offensively first half is zero punts. So we'll see if a three and out is in the offing. And that's got to be what Pat Hill talked to his club about. White, who had 256 yards passing in the first half, wants to air it here. And across the middle at the 30-yard line. Garcia in on the play, and they're saying no catch. Incomplete. Trying to hit Brandon Jones. Big number 55, Jamal Brown, is a player who's really developed into a terrific offensive lineman. You've just seen him develop from that first time he walked onto the campus. Now he's a junior and the 6'6 fella Bill out of Lawton is quite an offensive lineman. Third and seven they'll need to protect here for White. Jones caught it on the second try and then is hit. And he made the initial grab. He might have had a chance to get something, but the juggling act allowed the defense to corral him, and Ricky Miller was there for Fresno State. Yeah, Jason White gets the ball off. He was well covered, so it was actually a dangerous play by the fact that he wasn't able to snag it the first time. All right, dare you to fake it here. Pretty close to the situation, Bill. Right hash and on the 25-yard line instead of the 30 down at uh, Alabama. Scores a little different, though. Just, just a little. And Blake Ferguson, who might have, for all practical purposes, could have been napping in the first half, wasn't needed. But this one, they may have got a touch on it. And it goes out of bounds on the Fresno sideline near the 45-yard line of Oklahoma. And a 20-yard punt. Sanders, I believe, was the player that got a hand on it. James Sanders. Well, Fresno, we told you and gave you well, the numbers earlier. They got the reputation of coming after kicks, and there's Pat Hill firing them up. It's a good job on Fresno's part. It's not on Oklahoma's part, though. That was late getting off. You're trying to get your kickoff at about 2-1 or maybe 2.2 seconds. 
but uh, that was a poor job of execution. Sooners have been poor punting the ball this year. They've had three blocks now. One of them was a bust on one of their captains who would remain anonymous. Another one was on us. Kind of it. Yeah, uh, but they've had two just busts, and then that one was uh, didn't get off in time. First and 10 at the 46. The OU crowd trying to cheer on the defense as Grady right across the middle and it is complete inside the 15 yard line on a nice pass over the middle Poole makes the tackle on the play of Alec Greco Greco three catches for the year coming in was a nice job nice job over the middle the tight end finding a little soft spot in the zone and this is sort of what you might expect the team coming out lethargic after you've got a 38 to nothing lead with the Two first downs given in the first half. You give a, a team that's resilient, Bill, a, just a little bit of fresh, fresh air, and they'll go score on you. First and 10 of the 13. Spock is in motion. Grady in the end zone looking for Greco again. Incomplete. Well, you know, if nothing else, the motivation to have the shutout is always yeah. there. Yeah. And certainly the crowd trying to urge him on. Nicholson was covering on the play that time. Pressure in the quarterback. Right, that should have been a touchdown, though. That uh, yeah. Grady didn't throw the perfect ball, but still it was catchable. And uh, against good clubs, right there, you're gonna. That's that's six points. So second and ten at the 13. Fresno State taking advantage of the block punt and only traveled 20 yards, getting excellent field position. And now with 9:52 to go in the third quarter, their best scoring opportunity. the middle Sumlin and he is stopped at the 12 yard line Gayron Allen is there to make the play for Fresno State Bryson Sumlin the ball carrier sophomore from Bakersfield California 5 10 200 pounds remember Rodney Davis if you weren't with us from the beginning the senior who last year ran for 1586 yards this year only 50 yards on 32 carries got hurt in one of the first plays of the game it has not been seen since what a miserable start to the well, season for him he got a wonderful player and just cannot get on track to now hurt Brady to throw it again and complete to Barry and he is in the end zone touchdown Barry and shows you his experience as he dives and puts the ball across the plane and the Bulldogs and their fans that have made the long trek from California finally have something to cheer about Dan Cody's speed coming from the from the end almost makes the play here but not quite in fact Grady is a little banged up on the play but that's an impressive start to the third quarter from Fresno point after by Byzantiner and Brett a junior from San Ramon California is able to hit this one it's 38 7 with time called here in Norman Bill and Dean Blevins Curtis Fitzpatrick with you here Fox Sports net college football the Sooners shutout is gone Fresno State Grady hits the TD pass caps off a four play 45 yard drive Barion gets the score and Pat Hill's dogs are on the board and you see the encouragement he's given to his ball club as Fresno State makes it 38 to 7 and Oklahoma will receive the kickoff here. This container ready to kick it off for the dogs. Rankins to the, to the top of your screen when they come and play here and Perkins to the bottom of the deep man. Rankins at the three. Across the 15 and is brought down near the 17 yard line. And Oklahoma will take possession there. Jennings making the tackle for Fresno State. You can always tell the energy of a club with where the first contact is made on a kickoff return. No surprise that momentum or at least feeling good about yourself is from Fresno State standpoint, Bill, they got down and covered very well. In Oklahoma, Bob Stoops, of course, I can see his offense come out, reestablish themselves here in the second half the way they did in the first, where other than the opening drive where they had the field goal, it was just touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. It's first to 10 from the 17 of the Sooners. Rankins and Clayton wide to the right side, running back. 
Kiwan Jones and nearly brought down by the shoulder pad, but spins out of there and may have gotten there's a flag on the play. Mesa makes the tackle for Fresno State. It's in the area that offensive holding is always called, and that puts Oklahoma yep. back in a hole and Fresno in a good position to put a stop on again. Well, it's funny what can turn games around, and not that this is turned around, but Fresno gaining a little momentum. They come out in the opening series of the second half. They have to call a timeout. Holding time on the offense. They get one first the down. Penalty is half the distance nothing to, the to speak of. Oh, you get the ball back. Doesn't move it. And then you get a little block punt. Yeah. And next thing you know, a short drive. Yeah. And they get it to their big man, Barian. Now they get a kickoff where they make a tackle, a penalty. And Oklahoma certainly at a point where need to make something happen offensively and Fresno realizing all right guys this is this is our chance to try to fight our way back in here first and 19 the ball on the eight Jones he's brought down near the 11 let's go down to Curtis on the sidelines all right guys you're taking a look at Derek Strait, the Sooner cornerback who left early uh, before the first half in it it looked like he was limping favoring a knee it looked like his left knee may have been banged up he just now returned in street clothes and of course that doesn't tell the whole story but uh, it's obvious he's not going to play the rest of the game not good when they come out without the pass. Yeah, you no, that's that. not at all. That's not at all. If you don't come out and it's one thing to come out and not play, but it's another to come out in street clothes. Second and 16 ball on the 11. Jones beside White in the backfield. Blitz off the top. And they get him within the grasp. He unloads. And it's incomplete. <laughs> Nearly had the safety. And Gert McIntyre putting the pressure on. This is almost a penalty also. We'll see if Jason White is outside the tackle box. He is not. He's not. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. That, that's real close, Bill. That could have been flagged. Sooner's going the wrong way this quarter. All right, let's see what they come up with on a third and 16 as the Fresno defense tries to stiffen again. Three receivers to the top. White. Time now flushed out of the pocket. And to Brandon Jones. Brandon Jones has the first down out to the 34-yard line where Mesa and Ray come in on the tackle. That credit goes solely to the offensive line. He had all day, all day, all day. And of course, you got to throw it and catch it. But look at this protection. Keeps his feet moving. Does a great job with that, Bill. And oh, nice gets a man to come open. Yeah. Yeah, it was a nice catch and a, and a nice throw. But it all starts up front. And he had time to let it all develop. And then not a dangerous pass because Jones was so wide open by that time. And White sets it up now, first and 10 at the 34 yard line. ball may have been tipped at the line as it falls near the 50 yard line and white getting up white's getting knocked down more than they want him to today he's had a huge day but uh, you know of all the players you don't want to see hobble off he would be at the top of the list yeah there's been a real emphasis right from the beginning of this team getting together that keep this guy clean well and Chuck Long will tell you that his plays are called always with the quarterback in mind first what can he do what suits him and they've just been real uh, protective as much as they can I mean you gotta you gotta go ahead and take your shots but uh, second and ten and they collapse in again on Kiwan Jones here at the 35 yard line may have fallen to the 36 before he was brought down and Sanchez makes the tackle manual freshman Lindsay California well we didn't have a a look at it completely <laughs> but uh, Jamal Brown had his man back uh, 23 yards <laughs> I mean you talk about blowing your man off the line of scrimmage he had him 23 yards downfield and his helmet fell off third and eight from the 36 they come after white again and this one nearly picked off looking for Rankins and then in the secondary Dials is the one that was trying for the INT there is a flag thrown on the play though what's gotten sloppy all of a sudden yeah and I, I guess not unexpected when you have a 38 nothing game at halftime flag is against Oklahoma and 
they'll sort it out again here. There were two holes by the offense. Both valves are declined. It's fourth down. You know, that didn't even show up in the uh, in the statistics, you know, that you have one hole, much less two <laughs> on one play. Ferguson back to kick. So after not punting in the first half, he's on for a second here in the second half. Remember, they tipped the last one. Fourth and eight from the 36. Perrion is the deep man, and you know how dangerous he is for the Bulldogs. And this one is blocked and picked up. Inside the 25 yard line, Fresno State. First time boos have been heard since Bob Stoop stepped on campus, except for referees and for the opposition. James Sanders blocked it and recovered it, I believe, Dean. He did it all. Here. Let's see how it comes in this time. There's Jennings is 18 in there. Just really unaggressive from the Oklahoma standpoint. And you've got to do a better job. Dan Tam Townsend let a, a man come in over the top of him. We'll see if the defense can get it cranked up here. Momentum clearly with the Bulldogs. Second punt Fresno's blocked today, fourth this year. And on first and 10, they come out throwing to right on the screen, and OU runs to the football well, stops it after a couple near the 22-yard line. Nicholson and Allen leading the charge. Dwayne Wright, the receiver. Fresno has come out of the second half with a, a pretty good offensive plan. Uh, Signetti, Frank Signetti is the offensive coordinator. Um, so Oklahoma emotionally is not as into it as they should, as much as they should be, but they're also missing two guys, as we mentioned, who are playing the NFL next year. Second and eight at the 22. Davis in motion, and now Grady to throw it. He is in trouble, and it is complete. Spock catches it sliding toward the sideline. And 531 to go in the third. Dan Cody had the pressure on Grady that time as Spock made the reception. Dan Cody came out of nowhere. Now here's a guy in Dan Cody who is 6'5, 270, only a junior. He'll be a if, if he continues to improve, Mike Stoop says he'll be a first round draft pick. And Bill, this guy can fly. And a really interesting comeback story. Third down and eight. And it is incomplete. So decision time for Pat Hill. Does he go for the field goal or look at Mike Stoops on the sideline? Watch Teddy Lehman. Great play to have him isolated. He sees he sees screen and he's able to get over and deflect the football. That's just a tremendous instinctual play. Uh, Teddy Lehman. Like post defender in basketball. Yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. going to deny the ball. Byzantiner is on for the field goal attempt, and it's a 39 yarder. No good. So Byzantiner, who was three of four on the year and hit from 47, can't hit the 39, and Oklahoma still leads 38 to 7 with time called. Oklahoma 38, Fresno State 7. It was 38 zip at the half. Dogs got a touchdown, then got another block punt and come up with zip. It'll be a little bit disappointing after uh, what Pat Hill saw to start the second half. You know, there's a guy, though, that if you're going to go to the locker room 38 to nothing down, you want a guy like that who is very confident. And you can't be confident after that kind of half. But still, <laughs> he you know, was, I'm sure. Well, he probably found something to be confident about. His coaches are exact same way. He sets the tone for them. Um, and, I, you know, Bill, I think you and I would agree on the, the fact that, uh, you know, we end up talking to a lot of coaches around the country before doing these ball games. He's always a good one to talk to you because he'll tell you, tell you what he thinks, and he'll cut to the chase. He'll yeah. tell you in uh, 30 seconds what other coaches will take 10 minutes to not tell you. <laughs> well put, partner. First and 10. Yeah, is fun to deal with. First and 10, ball on the 22, and Oklahoma trying to get the ground game going, and Kiwan Jones tackled by Dwayne Andrews. Sense of urgency on the sideline there with the Oklahoma offense as the defense came off with some excitement after the best field goal. Second and two. 
Second and two. Ball at the 30. And Jones again on the ground around the 31 32 yard line. Well, Oklahoma in the first half, let's take a look at their possessions compared to the second half. And you'll see what a difference it has been. Five consecutive touchdowns following the field goal and then start the second half a punt and a tip punt at least that went 20 yards and then the block punt. And Oklahoma now trying to get it offensively third in round one at the 31. And again Jones straight forward. Well, be close. Yeah, it first looked like it was easy, but they closed quickly as Garcia was there. Question is, does Bob Stoops go for it on fourth down with the big lead and with the problems punting the football? Three thirty-two to go here in the third. First down as they will move the chains for the Sooners. Oklahoma twenty-three first downs in the first half. And now 24 for the ball game to Fresno State's five. At the 32. White rolls out and then got crushed trying to get it to run us. And a flag is thrown back where the throw was released. Maybe a little roughing the passer. We'll see. There's another hold no. by the Sooners. What it's one thing to protect and keep him healthy. It's another to holding on it yeah. every other play. Davin Joseph holding, guilty. Holding on the offense. On the, offense. the penalty is 10 yards and replay first down. Not only the hold, but still he gets uh, hit by the by the blitzer. So this has been a bad third quarter for the Sooners, particularly on, well, you can't say that, special teams, defense, and offense, yeah. but uh, they haven't done a lick on offense. First and 20 now, the ball on the 22 of Oklahoma, and White tries to hand off and does, and then Works, who comes in for his first carry of the second half, is slipped up, and James Sanders is there making the stop for the Bulldogs. You know, it is so hard to go into a locker room and beat a, an Alabama team in an emotional game the way you did and come out and surprise even yourselves in busting up on top 38 to nothing and not having to punt. And then, you know, you don't ever expect to do this, but it's kind of hard to come out with that same enthusiasm. Now second and 20. Wilson, the intended receiver. Sanders, Sanchez, Washington all in the vicinity for Fresno State. Well, as Pat Hill fires his troops up, certainly look around the Big 12 today. Arkansas knocked off fifth-ranked Texas, 38-28. Kansas State blew away Massachusetts, 38-7. K-State ranked number six. Also, uh, Washington State is hammering Colorado, 37-13, with 14.45 to go in the third quarter. So Colorado's having problems defensively. They have better quarterback play, but another blitz coming. Runnels on the reception. Well, you're not going to pick up no. pick up a first down there. So the blitzing is getting to Oklahoma, and they're not able to get downfield. So I think there's been some really nice adjustments done, uh, made at halftime by Fresno on both sides of the ball. Claude Sanders making the tackle along with James Sanders in there, and fourth and 16 is what's set up for the Sooners. And let's see how Ferguson handles the pressure here and how OU blocks him. Barron is back for the Bulldogs. Crowd cheers as Ferguson gets it off and then Barion zips right up the middle. And Barion to the 45 and all the way down to near the 42 yard line. So a nice return for Barion. And great field position for Fresno State. We mentioned some of the scores. Let's take a quick look at some of the action. Uh, Arkansas stunning the Longhorns in Austin. Chris Iowa, after losing five in a row to Iowa State, reclaims the Cyhawk Trophy. Missouri blanking Eastern Illinois. There's the K-State final. 
Colorado talk about schedules. They yeah they play anybody. Well they have uh, at Florida State coming up. Oh yeah. Those are pansy on the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> After having to open up with what they've had with an exciting win over Colorado State and UCLA. Intercepted by Oklahoma Pool at the 25 yard line. Bromney Pool picks off the first down pass from Jeff Grady. And there is the Oklahoma defense to try to turn the momentum back to the Sooner side. Rodney Poole is one of the best athletes on this club. In fact, Mike Stoops thinks he might be. Rangy, big, has speed. Just a terrific play right there. It looked like it was open for a minute, and he came out of nowhere. This guy is, Mike calls him a freak. He, he has a vertical leap of 40 inches, and he just feels that he has to mature to come along and, and be a, a, a great player. He just is young right now. His first interception of the season gives the Sooners first and 10 and works. Makes it to the 37 yard line where Washington makes the tackle. Ronaldo works, gets some room straight up the gut. Nice job by J.D. Runnels. Just looking for the first man to hit. Happened to be a safety. Ronaldo gets it north and south. He is really more of an east-west runner. They're trying to get him to, to be more of an north-south downhill runner. 13 yards gives him 79 for the game. Works going again as a helmet comes flying off. Don't they have chin straps these days? <laughs> Seen more helmets off lately. Wes Sims lost his there. Is it? Adamo made the tackle for Fresno State. Isn't it amazing how teams, players adjust to the game? Remember when the rule came out that you couldn't take your helmet off? You know, you yeah. go back and watch these ESPN Classic games, you see, you know, more helmets off than on, running off the field. But uh, anyway, uh, the players have adjusted to that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point of it. Second and eight at the 39. Works looking for a hole. Kept his balance and ends up picking up a couple to the 43 yard line. And McGill making the stop for Fresno State. Well, Works has found the end zone a couple of times today. And after Jones getting the bulk of the carries early in the third quarter. Those works work in the first half. That ends the third period with Oklahoma up 38 to 7 and on the move once more. We're watching it all on Fox Sports Net. Stay with us. We get ready to start the fourth quarter here in Norman. Gaylord Family OU Memorial Stadium where the Sooners a commanding 38-7 lead, but it was 38-0 at the half. And the offense, though, after the pick by Rodney Poole has come to life again. Yep. And as we start the fourth, Dean, third and five of the 42 of the Sooners. Lance Donnelly playing tight end again for the Sooners, number 86. We've not seen Bubba Moses, number 89, all day long. Clayton in motion out of the shotgun. White the quarterback. Fires to Clayton. He breaks one. Oh, goes in reverse and then back up as he go, goes to the 36-yard line. Remember the old tearaway jerseys? Yeah. He might have scored <laughs> if he had that on. Yeah. And the Eddie Hinton, Ben Hart tearaway jersey, he'd be gone. Hey, look at this. Now, this is rifled in there. They see something, they know it's going to be open, but it has to be zipped. And it is. We talked about this guy, Clayton, being the, the Sooner in the past who's been both the go-to guy but, and also the most elusive after the catch. And a freshman record, 45 grabs. Then last year, 26 receptions. Play action, White. And it is complete to Rankins, and he is hit hard. I mean crushed inside the 23-yard line. Tyrone Culver made the hit. You know what's amazing about that is that he held on to the football. It is a terrific hit and a clean hit. 
Bill, I like, really like this receiver, by the way, but boy, what a catch. Boy, he got hit hard and was juggling the ball, it appeared, as he got hit. Still managed to hang on to it. So the Sooners now have Will Peoples, Mark Bradley, and Juwan Rankins all within all are injured. So that six man rotation I mentioned that has been really solid for the Sooners is not solid right now. This this one doesn't look good as the players are on the field or motioning for their coach to come out. Anytime the head coach comes out to the field, that is not good. And that's where Bob Stoops is headed. One more time, and remember, they also lost their defensive standouts earlier today, Lance Mitchell and Derek Strait. Well, you see him moving his legs. At first, when I saw the hit, I thought maybe his knee got doubled under. But uh -huh. that, they're not attending to that at all as Bob Stoops comes off, and they help. Pat Hill applauding as well as the huge crowd of over 80,000 here today and Rankins. And Bob Stoops coming in here today at 45 and 9 and how successful? Well, Barry Switzer in his winning percentage at 84%, 83-7. Bob Stoops not far behind. And boy, it's nice to pretty good little Switzer Wilkinson sandwich if you're uh, the meat in the middle there, huh? Pretty strong right there. <laughs> Tell you what. And of course, won the national championship the Orange Bowl win beating Florida State was the national coach of the year then right now I'm not concerned about any honor he's concerned about the health of his football team Coming back on the running game now on a first and 10 from the 22 Kiwan Jones brought down by Sanchez you know this Oklahoma football team is an exciting team to watch they play ferociously defensively they Forced turnovers, they're good in the kicking game. And offensively, they've been very exciting and very efficient. But this is one of those lulls, Bill, where nothing has happened. They really need to stick this one in and regain some momentum. Second and nine at the 21. Right out of the shotgun. Finds Clayton. Clayton spins and then is hit. Appears to be shy of the first down. Adamo. Led the charge from the defensive side by the dogs. Dials was also there for Fresno. All right, let's watch the head of Mark Clayton. As soon as he catches this, watch his head. Turn straight up field. Wants to see where the defender is, see what he has to do to make that first down. And after seeing his teammate Rankins get rocked, sometimes you're, you're wondering about turning around ahead on a swivel. You better be. Who knows what's about to meet you? Third down and two now after that play at the 14 yard line. Willie Roberts tie, uh, top of your screen or to the it's on the right side is a tight end. He hasn't played any this year and today and touchdown Donnelly Lance Donnelly on the reception Boy, they had guys in motion and Fresno State never caught up with it. Donnelly with the TD reception and Jason White. Puts the buzz back with his OU offense. I was busy trying to get Willie Roberts out of my mouth and had trouble <laughs> looking downfield. Bill, tell us what happened. <laughs> well, Donnie was wide open, I can tell you that much. <laughs> uh, play action pass, they had perfect protection, and it, it was like you said, Bill, there was confusion on the defense all the way around. And, and Donnelly's looking for a big day, and with Bubba Moses out of the lineup, he's getting a lot of playing time and a huge touchdown for him. And a continued great day for Jason White. That's got him, I believe he's now over 300 yards, and that's four touchdown passes. Oklahoma 45, Fresno State 7. 45-7, Oklahoma getting its first touchdown of the second half. It comes with 13-28 in the fourth quarter. And the fourth touchdown pass of the day for White and the Sooners, a 14-yarder to Donnelly. They've spread it around today, and it's now 45-7 with 13-28 to go. Bill, it'll be interesting to see when Oklahoma takes its frontline players out. You mentioned during the break that there's injuries, and that has to be a, a, a serious concern. 
Um, but I think on the other hand, you, you have trying to reestablish yourself. You want to leave the game the way you played the first half, feeling like uh, you're very confident and that things are in sync. Yeah, you walk a fine line there. You want to win the game. You want to stay as healthy as you can. But you also want to get players into a rhythm that you left the game as dominant as you started. And the kickoff down near the 28-yard line on the return. Let's go down to Curtis on the sideline. All right, guys, more with the mass unit report today for Oklahoma. Jawan Rankins, it looks like he's going to be okay. He's walking around. Maybe he had the wind knocked out of him, but he's got his helmet on and was saying he wants to go back in. Well, that is good news. First and 10 at the 33 for Fresno State. You know, the other thing you talk about when you take, like, Jason White out of the game, we mentioned too, Jason White, fifth-year senior, but really hadn't played in two years. So you want him to gain some experience, yeah. which you're not normally saying about a senior quarterback who's been a starter for three years. Of course, you don't want to get him hurt in no. this type of situation. Um, Perkins is a player there, Bill. You see him in the screen there, number 28, who's really developing as an outstanding cornerback. He's another guy with a 40-inch vertical who just can accelerate with the best of them, just uh, has all the God-given ability you'd ever want and has a chance to be a, just a, a terrific player, and he's already developing into that. Second and nine at the 34 for Fresno State, and Sumlin dives forward, got tripped up near the 37 yard line and Larry Burdine made the stop on that and we're talking about it he's down there Jason White's getting the lice put on one of his knees well that's probably a telltale sign that he's going to sit Oklahoma fans would prefer that than to think that he's been hit and is going to have to go out I, I think that's the that's the sign that he's coming in relief pitcher needs to show up Bill we saw Paul Thompson for one play I believe it was in the first half Sumlin with a reception kept his momentum going forward enough for the first down to the 45 plus Giron Allen making the tackle for the Sooners. Look at those helmets behind you're talking about the V earlier. Look at all those things back. Looks like a NASCAR or Indy car. <laughs> we mentioned earlier the San Joaquin Valley is what the V is put on there for is Pat Hill uh, appreciate the things he does. He's so proud of his community and sure what he's built at Fresno and Tribute to the agriculture highlight there. Ran the run again. This is right, the 20, and almost broke it, but caught from behind by Perkins, I believe it was. Yeah, Antonio Perkins saved the touchdown, but Fresno is knocking on the door now at the five. So Mike Stoops immediately sends in four fresh troops. Teddy Lehman in there gets trapped on the inside, and there's just a missed tackle. And then it's a race to the end zone and we were talking about Perkins a moment ago and, and he catches up but you know the numbers were so impressive for Oklahoma earlier all of a sudden you look up and also all, you know the numbers aren't good and the putting up points on the board is not what you want to allow defensively. Dwayne Wright's 49 yard run makes it first and goal from the six yard line for the Bulldogs. Sumlin cuts back and into the end zone touchdown Fresno State. No flags in the Bulldogs with a big run by Wright. Get Bryson Sumlin into the end zone for the first time. That type of play is effective against Oklahoma and, and uh, teams that pursue as much as Oklahoma does. They, you get them coming one way and you cut back against the grain and that was a walk in. Gayron Allen 48 gets tucked inside. Byzantiner with the point after is good for the Bulldogs. And they get their second score of the day. It's now 45-14 on Sumlin's score. Bryson Sumlin, who had not carried the football coming into this game, gets the touchdown run here on a five-yarder. A point after good, and Fresno State trailing 38-0 at the half. On the second half thus far, 11:22 to go here in the ball game, and they'll kick it off as you see Perkins setting up. As one as the deep man, as long as Rankins is also back in, so apparently he is okay. And Rankins will take the advice from Perkins and down it here. And Oklahoma will bring on Paul Thompson. Here's a look at the sophomore quarterback from Leander, Texas, down near the Austin area. 
And Paul, one play earlier in the game today, on the year five of six for 38 yards and has thrown for a touchdown. He's six four. He can dunk a basketball behind his head, and he also, Bill, can high jump seven one. Hey, ran track, all district basketball, and obviously a great football player. So it gives you an idea of his athleticism. Heck of a student, great guy to go along with it. Nothing missing. See what happens. First and ten. Hands it off to Works and Works to the 25-yard line. So Jason White is done for the day. He's lonely, but he's really not when you look at those numbers. 25-37 has him a huge, huge day. I don't know who threw the conference bill will be a, have a better day and be a big 12 offensive player of the week candidate, but you've got to have big numbers to be better than that. Yeah, and Tech's off this weekend. Usually you would think Texas Tech with uh, Simmons, their quarterback, but not the case here. And Oklahoma keeps it on the ground here on second and six. Hicks getting his first carry. And Dante is a sophomore from McKinney, Texas. They're in the Dallas area. McIntyre and Andrews make the stop on him. And Hickson, three carries for eight yards. That was all against North Texas in the season opener. Did not play in the Alabama game. You know, it's hard to evaluate a guy like Hickson. I'm sure he was hoping to be able to get in with the more significant downs with the first team offense. Third down and six here. Hickson back there with Thompson. Thompson to throw it. And does. It's complete. Let's see where the spot is for the first down, though. Peoples making the reception. I don't think he got it. Just by people's reaction is what I'm going on. Well, no, yeah. Now they do get it. Maybe pardon. Man, that was an interesting spot there. Yeah, he just um, had to get to any part of that 30 yard line. Um, how about the release of Paul Thompson? I mean, this guy gets rid of it quickly. And he has some uh, some steam on it. And he's got a great release over the top being 6'4. So he, he's got some natural ability. And of course, he can run. And here's a look at it. 35. 40, Thompson turning it on, 30, 25, and out of bounds, and got him a referee to boot. Oh, my. Yeah, he's got some feet. Pick him up and lay him down. Well, Chuck Long will tell you, quick release and got great feet. Pretty good combination. You know, that's what you look for. Great play fact. fake. Look at him getting downfield and... All he had to do was cut back once to score, but that's a lot easier to see than up here than down there. But uh, very, very good speed. And that's the kind of player that gets people excited, particularly when this is a guy capable of doing that coming off the bench. 50-yard run, and it gives the Sooners their 31st first down. Hickson wants to get in the act, and you'd think a 5'10", 194-pounder to show you more of that scat back speed. He shows you some power on that run. Let's go down to Curtis. Hey, guys, he, uh, the Paul Thompson run obviously showed his athleticism, and I remember asking him a couple weeks ago how he got away from the University of Texas. He's from Leander, Texas, which is right around the Austin area, and he said that Mac Brown and company wanted him to be a defensive back. He said he wanted to be a quarterback. Oklahoma wanted him as the QB, so he came here. Well, he threw for 1,600, ran for better than 1,000 his senior year, combining for 26 touchdowns. And, uh, and nothing in reference to Mac Brown, but one of the things I like about Bob Stoops, Dean, is a simple, sounds simple, but it's hard to keep your word sometimes to say the best players will play. Yeah. And you get the opportunity to play, and you earn your time, and it doesn't matter about anything else. Well, I know when that word came out that the Oklahoma staff said, thank you, we'll take him, and we know right where we'll try to play him, and we think he will play. Second down and at the six, Hickson. Momentum carries him across the five-yard line. Bill, you're going to see Hickson, uh, what do we have left, eight and a half to go in the game. You're going to see every time he touches the ball, he's thinking one thing. He's thinking, I want to get off the bench. You know, I think that if I can, can run well, I'm going to get enough carries to prove that I should be playing more. And that's what you want. That's one of the good things that Oklahoma has right now in three healthy running backs who are all pretty good. They've, they've, they've got competition. So it's third down and goal from the five now. Thompson, Hickson beside him. 
fakes to him, and Thompson keeps himself. Touchdown Sooners! Paul Thompson. Well, there's another weapon that he offers you that Jason White right now, you'd rather no. not run in that situation. No, but, but teams have to defend against it. Look at him accelerate. Great play fake. Boy, all you need is just a just a split second that you keep the defense off balance, and, and that's what he got right there. Alabama had to prepare some last week for option football, Bill, because being concerned about this guy. And now teams will have to do so even more. Makes it 52 to 14 as DiCarlo hits the point after for the Sooners, and Paul Thompson takes it in himself. He and White both having great day. Sooners 52, Fresno State 14, fourth quarter, 7.56 remaining, and Oklahoma following the touchdown by Thompson and crew. We'll kick it off here to the Fresno State Bulldogs. 80 yards, eight plays. Thompson, 54 yards rushing, including the 50-yarder that busted it open. And made the Sooner faithful very happy here on a sunshine day in September. It started off with some clouds and rain during the week, but cleared off to the ball game in Oklahoma. 38-0 at the half, now 52-14. Let's see what the Sooners do with this kickoff. They've been kind of up and down with their kicks today. Oklahoma's total offense. They go back to 99 against Baylor. First downs, I believe, is the best in the stoop zone with 31 first downs. Kick it off here, and Berrien takes it to the 39-yard line. Our crack assistant, Marty Sullivan, is throwing on a, a throwing us a number that says that if the Sooners get how many more yards is that, Bill? 52 passing yards. They get eight more passing yards. They will become the uh, ranked number 10 in terms of passing total yards you know you in history. OU history. Their all-time is 429 against Louisville in 99 and Baylor also 429 that same year. Well, let's see. 746 to go. First things first. Soon as trying to stop Fresno State and Jeff Grady has gone the distance at quarterback. He hands it off to Wright who had the big run last time to set up their score. And he is stuffed here. Matt McCoy making the play. McCoy who scored on the two point conversion in Oklahoma earlier today. Sooners 568 yards offense Fresno State 170 Fresno with 80 on the ground 90 in the air they came in averaging 226 pass is complete to Spock and he goes to the 50 Sooners in the linebacker uh, positions right now. Bill Clint Ingram will be getting his most extensive action now. Number 44, and that was a kind of void area where that ball went. And Pasha Jackson getting a little more playing time now. Number 53, generally a starter, but um, I haven't been playing as much and probably haven't been playing quite as well as, as um, he had hoped. <laughs> First to 10 from the 50. Pass is complete to the 30-yard line. First down, Jennings for the Bulldogs. Let's go down to Curtis Fitzpatrick. All right, guys, some bad news for Oklahoma fans. We saw the injury earlier in the game with Lance Mitchell, their All-American candidate at linebacker. It looks like a torn ACL. He is going to be out for the year. Whoa. That is not bad. That's awful news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Torn ACL appears for Lance Mitchell. Oklahoma's leading returning tackler, leading tackler coming in here. Wow, what a blow to the Sooner team. Pass is incomplete. There won't be much happiness around here tonight with people who follow this really closely, the players and, and the coaches. And, you know, the shame of it is that it comes in a game where you're going to win by 45 points. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't have been good regardless, but in a, in a game like this, um, I mean, th this, guy, this guy, Bill, as you well know, just a heck of a player. He's another one of those guys that keeps his mouth shut, does the right things, and he'll have a good pro career, I'm sure, in front of him. But that really dashes some of the Sooner hopes defensively. 
Second and 10 at the 30. And the pass complete and across down to the 10 yard line as making the reception Jermaine Jamison, a sophomore from Carson, California. Last year, he got loose for 39 catches and 639 yards. He'd only caught three balls in the first two games. Nice grab here. Well, there's a reason these guys are seconds, as coaches will tell you. And that's the second team guys, you know, leave uh, leave gaps in a defense, and they just aren't as good as the first guys. And so you're, you're seeing good execution from Fresno and poor defense by some of the Oklahoma players. First to 10 at the 12, and Bryson Sumlin powers his way down to the six-yard line, picks up six on the play, and Broadney Poole is there to make the tackle for Oklahoma. Inside the six-minute mark here remaining in the football game. And certainly the celebration of Oklahoma winning this game will be subdued by those players on the sideline. The fans may be leaving here not understanding, of course, but Mitchell out return PCL not to return this season. Game three of the year. Second down and four for the Bulldogs. Sumlin. And if there was one position on this club that could not stand a season ending loss, it was the linebacker position. There was very little depth there to begin with. Ingram 44 may have to step up and, and play quite a bit. Clint, a sophomore from Texas, makes the tackle here. And now Oklahoma trying to make a goal line stand. It's third down and one at the three. So Fresno State, they don't get the TD. Certainly had the opportunity to get four more downs to work with. Grady rolling out to throw. And complete and touchdown Bulldogs. So Fresno State goes through the air for this one as Versher. Rashawn Vercher gets the tackle. He's a redshirt freshman from Bakersfield, California. And Vercher makes it 52 to 20. Sooners don't good, do a good job of getting out in the flat. Good play action when it's third and one. You've got to respect the run. And then a man open and a man who can throw it and an easy touchdown. And after a terrific first half on defense and just throwing up a shutout, you see a combination of poor defense and good execution on offense, and the Sooners coaches do not want to see that number expand to three touchdowns that they've given up now, 21 points. 52-21 as Grady gets his second TD pass of the day. Virtue gets his first score, and we'll be right back here in Norman. Oklahoma 52, the number one ranked Sooners leading Fresno State by 31, and this one goes out of the end zone. Sooners will get it first and 10 on their own 20 yard line. Bill Land, Dean Levins, and Curtis Fitzpatrick with you. As Paul Thompson will come back on for another series. He capped off the last one with a touchdown run of his own. And the first and 10 of the 20, and 435 remaining. As he comes back on, again, we remind you that. Uh, not only Lance Mitchell out with the torn ACL, but uh, Derek Strait, who's been an all-star performer here, came back in street clothes, and they don't have a definitive answer on the status of his injury, but uh, just the, the first report is that it's not good and that he may be out for at least a game or two. We'll have to wait and see and hope for the best on that, Dean. Uh, goodness. Well, I mean, the storylines are going to be, from a positive standpoint, what Jason White did, 570 total yards at this point, et cetera. But the true storyline are, are the guys who are out. You know, Oklahoma's playing for a national championship. A false start on the offense, five yards, still first down. I mean, you got to go win all the games to have a chance to win a national championship, but that's your goal. And for Oklahoma to win a national championship, you've got to have all Americans in high draft choices like Lance Mitchell and Derek Strait in the lineup. Um, and now, who knows, Strait quite possibly could be out uh, a period of time, and we know Lance Mitchell will, so uh, at least the quarterback's walking home healthy. Yeah, thank goodness, just an ice pack on his knee. As Thompson in trouble here on a first and 15, and he is brought down on his own, I'm gonna mark it, I think, around the seven yard line. Morris led the way on the sack. So Oklahoma in a bit of a hole right now on a second and long. Nowhere to go for Paul Thompson here. He's trying to find a guy, and he got no blocking up front. 
Uh, poor job up front by the fullback, Dan Townsend. Loss of seven yards on the play. Brings up second and 22. Hicks back in the backfield on the handoff, and he has nowhere to go. Fresno State ripped through the OU offensive line that time, and McIntyre and Miller, M&M boys, making the tackle that time for the dogs. Feast or famine for Oklahoma today, and right now, serious famine. Feast or famine, and as, as we're saying it, uh, famine-ish at this point. Um, third, third and 25, and then if you don't gain any yards, you have your man standing on the in line to punt, and you've had problems punting anyway. Uh, and he'll be punting into the wind, so not to spin it totally negatively, but <laughs> you don't want to put a defense in position to give up 28 here in the second half. Thompson fakes the handoff, keeps the football on a third and 25, and <laughs> Hawkins making the tackle. Well, Oklahoma's had two punts blocked today, Dean. They'll get an opportunity, I would think, here to work on their blocking in their well, punting situation. Uh, <laughs> Pat Hill going to bring them all again with 317 to go? Well, sure. And, and, you know, even if they don't get the block, you put a return man in a wonderful position for a, a big return. You just try to get it off in the... Almost got that one blocked. Barry. You know what? Bassey didn't play it as though the halo, he played it as though the halo rule was there. If a guy doesn't give you a fair catch call, you just go hammer him. And as a result, Barron got a few extra yards on the play. Let's take a look at some of the scores uh, in some of the finals and some that are still going on here today. UMass falling to K-State. Colorado all but done against Washington State as... Pac-10 win in that battle. Kansas up 14 in the second half over Wyoming in Laramie. Mentioned earlier, Arkansas knocks off fifth-rated to a sixth-ranked Texas. Iowa beats Iowa State. And Missouri a final over Eastern Illinois. First and 10, and some a touchdown today. Close to the 30-yard line. Poteet and McCoy making the tackle that time. Bill, I tell you that there, there's not going to be a lot of uh, joy in Mudville in the locker room because of the injuries that we talked about. And the defensive coaches will will not like at all what's happening in the second half. But there won't be any. There will be very very little joy at all, uh, especially defensively, if this bunch cranks in another touchdown here. Sumlin looking to do that on a second down and six carry. He has stopped the 26 yard line. Well, you know, let's talk a bit about the Big 12 here. We'll take another look at this play, but Texas loses. Colorado loses today. Oklahoma's going to win, but suffers one critical injury and another that we're, we're not sure about. And then tonight, you got Penn State and Nebraska. Nebraska ranked number 18. I think the jury is still out on how good they are. I don't think Penn State is, is very strong this year, but that's still two traditional powers. Yeah. Nebraska falls tonight and yeah. a big hit for this league. Right. It's going to be an interesting game to watch for Frank Solich's crew to see if they can rebound. Wright carrying the football, third and two. Very close, had to get to the 24. Corey Klein making the tackle. Corey out of Tulsa Union. Of course, the other big game is uh, Michigan has been pouring it on Notre Dame. And one of the traditional rivalries of college football. Yards on the play. First down, Preston State. I know you followed that Notre Dame program for a long time, Bill, and I think it's over. I don't think you're going to be able to rally your troops. That's a shame. First <laughs> ball on the 24. Now football season. Isn't it great? Right. Boy, slips right through, and he'll score. Touchdown, Fresno State. Right from 24 yards out and gets the touchdown. And I'll tell you what, Fresno fans, something to applaud about. And future Fresno opponents, beware. A team that was down 38 to nothing. And not a, just be honest, not a whole lot to play for. Another pride has come back and just played a whale of a second half. Yeah, they have. And we talked about Pat Hill being a competitor and a guy who can 
make people around him confident even in the I think we said the most un the, the least confident a group could be and his guys have come back and played very well. I mean I would have never believed that you'd look up on that scoreboard right now and see 28 points. So right with the TD run and 52 to 28 following the point after by Vicentainer. And Oklahoma up by 24 with 102 remaining. And Pat Hill is interesting. Be sure to check your program. He will leave it's here today with going, all right, we're, we made some recovery in the second half, and we're, we're back on track. And let me see, seven road games again this year. Where, where are we going next? Well, he's going to go next. Uh, the biggest advancement that they will make is when Penninger comes back to play quarterback for them. And they didn't really get many injuries. Um, they'll, they'll go home and get healthy and get Penninger back soon. And they'll host Louisiana Tech. It'll be the WAC opener for them. And Penninger is a guy that a uh, very talented player and helped lead them last year to the 9-5 and five mark. We'll have Louisiana Tech and WAC play, Portland at home, and then they go on the road, Colorado State, which has developed into a heck of a rivalry for them. And the Rams are ranked in the top 25. Well, onside kick, I guess not, huh? Well, you never know what people want to work on. Brandon Jones. Take a knee in the end zone. The Sooners will have 102 to work with on the ball that will come out to the 20-yard line. We can hear a pin drop in the stadium right now. Folks are headed out to enjoy the Sooner victory, but I mentioned when they hear some of the injury news, they certainly will be disappointed. Thompson back in charge and Hickson in the backfield. Ferrier, the fullback. Hickson thrown down hard on the play. Eddie Mann making the tackle. Well, that's what I mentioned to you. What I mentioned earlier is that if you're Hickson, you sure like the chance to play. But you, you say, do I have to get hit three yards in the backfield? Does that give me my best chance of, of gaining a starting job? Give me an opportunity with that first bunch, too. And with a little more action, the game's on the line. But you got, to, you got your opportunity to make the most of it. 31 seconds remaining. As 52 to 28. Again, he's going to take him out some frustration on the play, and that will in all likely be the final play of the game as Oklahoma stays unbeaten at 3-0. Bob Stoops gets a congratulations from Pat Hill. The Bulldogs drop to 1-2, but after a 38-0 halftime deficit, came back to make a strong effort in the second half and a final score of 52 to 28 Sooners by 24 on a huge day from quarterback Jason White as White throws for four touchdowns and 338 yards hitting on 25 of 37 with no interceptions and Oklahoma ends up with a 52 28 win over the Bulldogs. have a chance hopefully to visit with coach Bob Stoops here. We'll see if we can find out his thoughts on the game. Let's go down to Curtis. Go right ahead. Curtis. All right. We're here with Oklahoma head coach Bob Stoops. Bob uh, kind of a bittersweet game. Good first half sloppy second half. That's how it usually is when you're up 39 nothing at halftime. Uh, I believe every game I've ever been in as a coach. That's what happens. Uh, that's why you get out there and you get a bunch of twos in the game and it's probably why they're twos and not ones. Right, we're hearing reports that Lance Mitchell, uh, it could be serious, maybe I'll, an ACL. I'll address that in my press conference. Okay. Well, back out to you guys. All right. We appreciate uh, Stoop stopping by. And as we thought, not happy with a second half effort. Never seen so unhappy people with a 52-28 win. 